What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the KCM. Things are heating up here in week number three. We're gonna start off with some Terran versus Zerg on Retro. Let's go. The lineup this week is absolutely sick. We've got Royal Light Rush, Snow Best, Bisu, Hero Queen, and Action with Royal and Queen coming out first. I'm a little bit surprised to see Queen once again, but uh, maybe uh, Solki was busy. What do you think? Yeah, I think maybe it's a scheduling thing going on there. I don't know, but I'm not too happy with the Queen choice like you are. The rest of the lineup looks pretty stellar. I think the only thing you could really say is maybe uh, Sharp could squeeze in for Royal or Rush or something, but I'm actually really happy with the lineup for Terran and Protoss as it stands. Protoss especially looks very strong. But yeah, with the Queen pick, um, I'm, not, I'm not liking it too much. Yeah, it's... Uh... It's a strange thing that's happened with Queen. We're really kind of waited, waiting with bated breath to see if he makes a comeback or you know what he can do to turn this uh, kind of losing streak around. He, it hasn't happened yet in the KCM, but you know he's fully capable of doing it. He just needs to get his confidence back. Maybe I think. Yeah, I mean you can get stuck in these psychological ruts and. I've spoken off stream about this lately with like Hawk and that and I think um, usually people can actually benefit a lot from taking a step away from the game and actually coming back to it you know in a few weeks or a month for a completely fresh mindset the problem is for these pros is they don't usually get those opportunities they're kind of like stuck having to practice all the time because otherwise they just fall behind the curve a little bit too much get a little bit too rusty and can't compete quite at the same level anymore plus the the income aspect right they're playing in pro leagues and everything they need to be making that money um right, the, right. the life of a pro gamer uh, the, the amount of time that you can stay at the top of your game. Um, I mean, it's it's proven to be longer than maybe we thought, but uh, it, it's not forever. And these guys, they want to make the most out of the time that they've got. Yeah, but I guess you could make the argument, though, like players like Flash and these other Titans that have managed to secure like long-lasting legacies. You could, ask, you could argue that they are more the exception to the rule as well. There's plenty of pro gamers, a uh, dime a dozen of how like, you've had these little, very short-lived stints of stardom and then kind of like... You know, faded back to black again. It's true. Well, here we've got Queen starting off with an overpool, and uh, this is going to put him in a severe disadvantage because Royal's going to see these links popping out, and he's just gone for a, a one rack Zephy with a, a a wall in here at the front. So these links are going to do nothing, and a lot of economy has been sacrificed here for Queen, probably because he was expecting like an eight racks or some sort of greedy play out of Royal, like a CC first or something like that, that he could punish. Oh, absolutely. Royal, I think, is uh, one of the... I think he's one of the, the, the Terran players that uses 8 racks the most in TVZ, if anything. I think maybe not the absolute most, but definitely one of like, the top two or three people that are most likely to go 8 racks, I would argue, yeah. So, misreading the situation here, Queen, gonna find himself in a pretty tough spot sticky situation here and how will he be able to maneuver his way out well against a player like royal he's not going to give you a lot of chances and it's really going to come down to the, the first initial engages with those mutilists if he can get some good damage if he can get the ball rolling maybe queen can get himself into this one but if royal just uh bears down and you know defends properly uh, puts the pressure on with the marine medic I think that Queen's just going to have a hell of a time getting himself into a mid-game. Yeah, it, it, could, it could go that way for sure. And especially with the wall in, it does allow Royal to kind of do what he wants behind this wall. And like, you know, if he wants to, he can cut a little bit of Marines even and you know, squeeze out a, a kind of a build order that wouldn't usually be able to go for. So I'm curious to see exactly what Royal's game plan is. And Queen going to be throwing down that four minute Spire as per usual up against this sort of 2x FE uh, way of playing from Royal. So I, I don't know. I, I really like 2 racks Academy. I think it's it's great. It's a great build. I'm not too fond of it in cross map positions always though. Wait, is this a thing? Queen went for overpool and now he's going three hatch. I, I don't think yeah. he, can he do that? Well, he thinks you can. I mean, I, I, you can do it. I mean, how optimal that is, I guess, remains to be seen. I feel like he's playing very suboptimal here to try and mess with Royal. 
uh, a little bit yeah. here because that's not the way you'd usually play if you're if you find yourself in a situation like this it's much more likely that you're gonna go for um the 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 optimal play which is just a whole bunch of mitas and as quickly as possible you know off of two hatches uh, so that you don't have to build these sunken colonies um yeah this is this is strange man the the extra hatchery here i don't think it makes a lot of sense economically but maybe it's going to throw Royal off a little bit. He's coming across the map here. He's going to force the Sunkins. I really don't know how this one plays out, man. This is this is uncharted territory for me. Well, I think uh, Queen is fine here. Though. Obviously, Royal can't bust this. Yeah. So he's probably just content with forcing the Sunks. The extra hatchery will allow him to produce a lot of drones now. And I guess maybe he's got a different game plan in mind. Maybe he wants to go for a mid mid game kind of like mutiling stab type play. Kind of how Sulky likes to play ZVT, where he just cleans up the Bible with the mutiling. Maybe he's trying to like change his approach in the matchup to like, you know, catch Royal off guard or something. Mm. Well, this is interesting. Uh, I'm not sure how many meters he's going to be able to produce. We're already at six minutes and we've got what four or five meters going to be popping out here. He really cut down on the amount of gas that he could mine because he didn't get that second gas until the spire was like halfway done. Uh, and I guess he skipped Ling speed here. I didn't see Ling speed. So he's trying to get out as many meters as he can. But as you can see, we're 620 right now. If we were going for regular 2.5 hatch, there should be seven mutas uh, coming well, in. I, I actually don't think he is doing that. I think he's just going five and he's playing super greedy. He's banking a lot of gas right now and he's just kind of chilling. I think he's going to go into an eco game here. I think he's going to squeeze out uh, some drones and transition maybe. I don't think he's going to like go too heavy into mutas. He will, I think mm. he'll add mutas now that he tr he'll drone up a little bit. But I don't think we'll see that many more mutas for some time. He's playing a funny game right now. He's hoping that Royal's going to overcommit to the defense here, build too many turrets, but Royal's really not doing that. Look at that. Only one turret here over the bunker, or over the, the barracks, sorry. And he's transitioning really, really fast. So yeah, going, getting into an armor. Well, he's going for an armory there. I'm a little bit surprised yeah. to see that. He wants to get a Valkyrie out, I guess. Well, it gives him a faster push timing. Like rather mm. than having to wait to like at, like eleven ish minutes or radiate to finish and then go, it's like okay, well we can like be outside your door at ten minutes, like like bang in on the gates, and that's a much stronger timing for Terran to work with. And if he is going pretty light on the muters and he's not gonna like have a strong like air presence right now to like whittle down this bioforce pre Valkyrie, then Royal's gonna have a very strong push timing. Uh, did you see a machine shop on the, the factory there? Because I don't think I saw one. Uh, no, I don't think I saw one either. So he's not going to go for like a fantasy push here with tanks and Valkyries. He's just going to want to get out on the map with just pure marine, a couple of Valkyries, try to push back the, the mutas, and maybe that'll give him a timing to get in there in the top left before lurkers are out and ready to defend. Right. Now, the Lurkush will be done around the time that the, the, the Terran is banging on the gates, but look how fast this pushes. It's eight minutes and he's already moving out with his first Valkyrie. He's become lost with his Valkyrie, though. Oh, he does lose the Valkyrie, though. Queen with a great snipe on that Valkyrie is just what he needs to like stabilize this game state right now. Lurkers will not be on the way for quite some time. He's got some drones transferring into the top left right now. He's going to start morphing in Lurkers uh, pretty imminently, but he's probably going to rely on, yeah, he's going to rely on Sunkens for the time being because usually you don't see the lurker transitions around the nine minute mark so he's still got a little bit of time where he needs to be cautious here oh he's gonna catch a second valkyrie oh my god the second valkyrie gonna go down without even firing a shot beautiful pick there doesn't even have to use his scourge but he will keep them alive oh man no scourge almost getting sniped there but i think with those pickoffs he can overwhelm this uh, small marine medic force over here at the top left. And then uh, reinforcements are going to come over here. There's Lings on top of that ramp. If he brings the Mutas together with the Lings, I think he could wipe that out. Looks like he's not going to do that. Instead, just going to harass this marine medic group here on the left-hand side, picking off a few of them, lightening the load that these uh, Sunkins may have to bear in just a few minutes. The Queen is attempting a very shrewd game here. So far, so good. He's at a great supply. 72 is applied to 84. He's got this third gas online now, so he can start to really churn out the production. Hive is finished. Defile amount on the way. It's a great defile amount timing. He'll have everything really crisp. And because of the, the Valkyrie first play and losing the first two Valkyries, I would definitely give like a strong edge to Queen here soon. Yeah, absolutely. Even with this kind of strange... Uh, off-brand play from Queen, picking off those first two tech units. It's like picking off the first two vessels, really. 
because it takes away such a timing from the Terran player and gives you a lot of space to breathe here as the Zerg. So he's going to be able to get those Defilers out in time, and we're going to go into a mid-game. This still gives Royal a lot of opportunities here. I would say it, it, in this matchup, once you get to this point where you've got uh, the Vessels out, uh, and Terran seizes map control away from the Zerg, you've got like three to five chances of moves that you can make, things that you can try to do, drops, uh, busts on the naturals, uh, those type of moves. Oh, he's going to get that Valkyrie again. No way. <laughs> three Valkyries have been picked off. That was a max range shot as well. He barely got that Valkyrie. Like, oh, the inputs were pretty crisp with Queen. Okay, so far, so good. I'm really impressed with Queen thus far. If you can just maintain this kind of gameplay for this game and maybe have one or two more games, I'm going to be uh, thinking twice about him. He's, oh, he's delaying this expansion at 3 o'clock as well. So far, it's, everything's looking great for Queen. So. Yeah, so th this is the point when Royal's going to start to seize the map control here. He did get delayed at that base, and a base is going to come up immediately here for Queen. Wow, he's going to take this very, very quickly. I don't like these lurkers out here. It's uh, not necessary, especially with the vessel. Uh, they're not really going to get anything done. We need to keep this back at home. But preparing for drops is going to be the next stage because definitely Royal going to be pulling those out. And there they are. Yeah, I mean, you kind of do have to do some kind of, you know, a lot of dropship gimbal gamble here. I think it's uh, only appropriate when you're this far behind in the tech curve. You've lost so many of these precious Valkyries in the early game. You haven't got the vessel fleet you would like at this this, this point in time. You could potentially have, you know, easily four vessels or maybe a little bit less than the one that got sniped. But instead, he's got this little double dropship gambit in the top left. There is an overall to come here and uh, spot this, but he's not quite going to be able to spot it in time. And he could, if he wanted to, elevate more of these units into the top left as well. Yeah, this is going to get denied here. Good move from Royal. Uh, a little bit uh, overzealous here. A little bit uh, ahead, getting ahead of himself, uh, really, by trying to take that base so quickly. But here comes a Defiler push over towards the center right. He should be able to, you know, trade tit for tat here against Royal. Yeah, and uh, actually Queen, pretty on top of his response here. It was very, um, a lot of the Zergs are like too hasty in defending this. And a lot of, ter a lot of uh, Starcraft players in general, they're always rushing their decisions. So usually just send the units on attack, move in, and they will die before the Defiler arrives to throw down the Dark Swarm. But this time Queen was quite tentative and like carefully approached to defend that. And now look at this pressure on the 3 o'clock, getting right on top of the production with these Swarms going to be shutting down this base from going up. If he denies the building of the CC as well, he can't just lift off and save it. So that's a real nightmare situation for Royal here. He does have a lot of pressure in this top left uh, quadrant of the map, but he's not quite done any damage to the infrastructure of Queen. Yeah, and this is right happening right as the uh, SCVs were transferring. A big plague on all of this. The Mutalists are going to come forward and clean that up really, really well. Queen handling everything so perfectly, and I think we're getting close to a tap out here because Royal just has no pressure. He's got no additional expansion. He can't get in and kill any of these bases. We're going to be four gas uh, Ultralisk here really, really soon with that two armor kicking in as well. Yeah, he's going to be like growing himself into a Mike Tyson with these Ultralisks and just like start delivering some knockout blows to Royal. I don't know how he's going to stomach the Ultralisks. I just, I just, it's going to be re. He hit the third gas, maybe there's some play there, but without that third gas operational for maybe a, a BC transition or just being out of field, like the, the, the amount of vessels he's going to need, even just irradiating the low HP muter there, so not getting full advantage on that spell, is going to be getting behind the middle line on that top left, though, denying some mining up there and putting on a little bit of pressure there is a drone transfer here as well so it's a little bit frustrating for queen but really he just wants this gas and royal knows that that's why he's targeting down that guys are right now link streaming it to try and clean that up and vessels kind of out of position but so far not uh, being picked off by the munisks yeah there's a couple of dropships behind this that have zero hp they've been plagued so he's trying to open up a position where maybe he can still fly in there oh, where wait where did those go did they, they didn't get picked off off screen did they i hope not I think they're back at home actually loading up right now. Um, they're going to be sent out once again to try and do one final move. We've had a couple of moves so far from Royal that haven't worked out. We'll see if he has this last chance to actually get some damage here. Look at that. Dropship flying out with like one HP. That's like the final hope of Royal. And it's, uh, it's a flimsy hope at best right now. Yeah, he's got one chip left in his stack, and it, it's... It, who knows? I mean, you've heard that poker expression, chip just in went the chair. Down. Maybe this is the... Just went down. And I think uh, the next one's going to go down as well. There it is. Uh, Second dropship just went down off screen. Yeah, both of them right there. Yeah. 
Ah, that's really unfortunate. That's yeah. really unfortunate. I, I don't see how he's going to recover from this. Queen is ahead in supply by uh, enough of a margin that it's kind of worrying right now. With four gases online, that's six ultras a minute he's able to produce if he so chooses. And with this kind of small bio ball, there's no way you can fight against that kind of production of a Zerg. And even getting this base tonight in the bottom right as well, like Royal is not having a happy day at all. No, he doesn't have anything to cut off reinforcements uh, coming out from the natural either he just doesn't have a bio force down there so queen can as he wishes send out units to uh hit that center right as many defilers and uh lings and lurkers as he wants to and there's really nothing that royal can do about it. he's sending a bio force now to start to cut those things off but i mean it's way too late there's still a there's already a bunch of units over there on the the right hand side these lurkers are going to burrow they're going to clean up this bio force and he's going to open up that position there on the uh, center right once again flying in trying to kill off some of these vessels he's actually killed quite a few of them it looks like and uh yeah roll just can't do anything about this this slow push over here on the center right is going to be the killing blow it looks like for royal he's not even the get to ultra and we're probably going to see a tap out yeah this is crazy from queen he identifies like game winning plays even about utilizing his late game main winning condition which is the ultralisk so kind of exceptional to see him in such a great game state just on the backbone alone of this defensive technology usually you don't see zergs winning from this this kind of phase of the game usually they do end up going into the ultralisk to kind of finish off the terran but queen's done such a good job utilizing the tools at his disposal even going in now to the three o'clock picking up some of these remaining vessels on low hp now just diving on him with the remainder of his swarm lots of links streaming in taking out some more vessels while the links are soaking up damage and oh, so much value for queen with such few units yeah it's just cleaning up scvs here while the bio force kind of flops around in the middle of the map nothing to do nowhere to hit everything is tied up tight and the ultra production has begun mass ultra gonna come out here with the plus two already finished we don't have speed yet but i mean th this is just so hard to clean up he does have plus three though plus three is pretty darn yeah. good against these low numbers of ultras i just feel like we're gonna see you know eight ten ultras pop out here any second well queen did delay his ultra production for quite some time and now we're at 17 minutes which is around the time terran if they're on curve with the grade timings they can get plus three around 17 minutes quite reliably and royal has hit all his timings pretty perfectly this game despite not being in the greatest of game positions so we do see queen though getting on top of the natural expansion with these dark swarms it's gonna be a nightmare situation for Royal. if he hasn't got like a big round of fire bats in production i don't know how he's gonna start dealing this up yeah it's just stellar play here from queen always uh, you know slipping out with those defilers getting some just a few lings a couple of lurkers into a good position has really given himself a great advantage in this game with those tiny little moves like this one walking through the top side of the map there's so many different pathways that you can take on retro and he's abusing them all to really get the most out of his units will get this fifth gas online as well we still have our natural right, and our main mining uh fully here there's no depleted geysers yet so he's gonna have so much gas to work with the bcs are coming in they are gonna get plagued though immediately another plague probably gonna come down on that um, more defilers coming up here getting those plagues there's just there's so little here for royal and the ultras are bearing down this is it gg is called and queen takes a win here breaking the losing streak perhaps yeah yeah i mean I, I hope this is a sign of things to come i'd love to be proved wrong say and i want to see him dominate now potentially who knows maybe he can just like go on a winning streak right now and be super excited to see that well now we've got a real test for queen let's see if he's shaken off the uh the losses uh, the past here and can he actually take on bisu here on blitz y this man has been on absolute fire especially in this matchup recently yeah, I mean, it'd be crazy to see Queen take down BC right now, but I'm, I'm going to be all about it, though. So if we do have Queen taking down BC, I'm probably going to be losing my mind a little bit. Yeah, it's um not expected. That's for sure. We both went into this thinking that Queen, uh, you know, shouldn't maybe even be in this lineup because of his recent performance. But let's see if he can show us both wrong if he can prove to us that he's still the queen that we remember uh, the one that won two asls uh, and then not the one that got knocked out of the qualifier this season 
Well, he did take down Royal in uh, game number one, so he's maintained his monarchy for the time being. Can he go all the way and take down the king of Protoss himself? Bisu. It's going to be a tough one. And we have the probe sharking around the natural minerals, kind of threatening the idea of a cannon rush here. But Queen knows better because of the probe timing. This is most likely going to be a gateway first. Yeah, no reaction here from Queen. Just calm demeanor here. It's what I like to see. He's going to fight this probe a little bit. Very difficult to, to win one over on the probe, especially a Bisu probe. But he does get a few good shots off here. Where will he take his third, though? Because that's going to be coming here pretty soon. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of awkward, actually, because you have this choice of taking it close, but it's towards the enemy, or much further away from the enemy and you. So mm -hmm. I guess it depends entirely on what style you want to play. If you want to play fast tech into, like, five hatched Lurker, then maybe taking this this high ground catwalk is okay. But if you want to play a more standard like six hatch Hydra, maybe you do want to take one of these bases in the bottom left. Dude, if he blocks this, like where are you going to take your third, man? I guess you have to take it in the front there, but the second Zealot could come up here and block you. Oh, I think he's just barely going to get that down. Um, yeah. This is this is a tough position here for Queen. So much is going on. This is where a lot of Zerg players will fall apart, but this is where we expect Queen to really shine. Can he actually hold all of this off and get his bases up on time? Hit his overlords and everything. So far, so good. Yeah, I mean, so far, Bisu has done a pretty good job of, like, really uh, railroading Queen into taking this third at the catwalk, and I might come back to haunt him later on. So uh, I wonder if Bisu's got a very well-timed uh, meta build coming his way. I'm curious what time he'll take plus one, when we'll get his Citadel, how many gateways he'll stay on for how long. We might see a very tech-heavy play out of him staying on just one or two gateways and going into Citadel and, and the Stargate here. I think you have to be a little worried here as Bisu that we might see a Hydra bust after forcing the hatchery closer to your own base, right? And this is right. a much better rally for the Hydras to come than bottom left. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, it, he definitely has to respect the uh, the rush here. But but you didn't kill any of the Zealots yet, so usually you can put on some pressure with these Zealots and uh, kind of check to see what's what, if it is going to be a Hydra bust, usually in time to get up the initial three cannons you need to not just dry, die straight up. Uh, he did lose one uh, Zealot behind the mineral patches, and it was really good micro from Queen um, doing that you know, four, uh, three, four lings onto one zealot and pulling back the weakened zealot or the weakened lings to keep them all alive. He did a really good job of that. So he's got a good number of lings here, but this is the pressure you're talking about. Three zealots going to walk out. They're going to check and see how many drones are being produced, how many lings are being produced. And this is perfect from Bisu. He knows that a uh, queen just made like, you know, four, six, eight lings uh, in response to those zealots coming over here. And now he's just going to walk all the way back home. Oh, is he turning around again? I don't like this. He should actually go home right now. Well, I think I think he's trying to um, trade here at this uh, choke point where mm. this uh, this neck of the catwalk is because he doesn't and he doesn't want to run back to where the overlord is to, to confirm to Queen the exact positioning of the zealots too quickly. Like, I think he wants to do it now so that he can't get surrounded. But until that time, he wanted to kind of like you know keep the doubt in Queen's mind just for a moment there. Ooh, that was uh, that was close, man. If you lose all those zealots, things get really. Um, get really rough for the protoss you can take a lot of liberties here as the zerg uh if you pick all those off and he made all those lings and he didn't get the kills on the zealots so queen's gonna be feeling pretty bad right now those lings are gonna be terrible later on when that uh plus one is done and speed is is on is on those zealots yeah we've got five hatchery production on the way so far for queen if he doesn't take too much economic damage uh and doesn't isn't forced to make too many links and what have you that he will be able to afford a, a sick hatchery eventually as well to really get enough hydras producing to stop putting on some aggression but for the time being he's a little bit suboptimal ever so slightly but i would say that this is about as good as you could hope to be against a player of bisu's caliber i imagine at this stage in the game yeah it's uh it's a real threat, those first few zealots as they're coming out, the three and then the four and then the five. Like, they slowly add up in number, and you do have to respond with something. But if you respond with a bunch of making a bunch of lings and the zealots just walk home, it puts you in a really rough spot. And he's going to come out once again. He sees the Hydralisk is there. 
Uh, there's going to be a Ling run by, though, I think, in towards the natural. This could be big. Um, pulling the probes right off the bat, though, so he, he probably won't get run by here. Maybe just a surround going to come down on these Zealots, but the Zealots are probably going to find a pretty good position here on this catwalk to fight. Yeah, I don't think that uh, Queen's going to get the greatest of trades here. It's just too bottlenecked up for the Lings to get a nice surround. They will trade reasonably well with the Zealots, but not as much as he would like to. He's going to lose a lot of these Zerglings, and he will soften up a lot of these Zealots, but not many of them are going to die. Yeah, not many of them are going to die, but, you know, at least he used the, the Lings to some effect. Usually they end up going down uh, for pretty much nothing against the Zealots, but... Uh, he probably made the best use out of those as he could, given the situation. And he's going to get one more Zealot here. No, not quite. That does survive with just 4 HP. More Overloads going down back at home, though. And I think we've got a lot of kills here. Three on that one. And another one on this second course there. So this is starting to get really rough with four kills. We can't afford a sixth hatchery even yet. Like, he's still on five hatchery production and he wants to be on six. Like, he wants to really crank out his hydras right now and he just doesn't feel like he... he's a little bit flustered, I think, as well. Like, he doesn't seem to be reacting in quite the way I would imagine him should he should be reacting right now so i think he's a little bit flustered a little bit out of, out of sorts but hopefully he can stabilize himself here yeah he's gonna get shoved back by just a few zealots pushing their way across the map they're going to force down another overlord here it looks like just gonna uh, engage with the hydras no they're gonna run back uh, as the hydra number increases here and pushes everything away but again queen supply block dt on the map could be slipping into the natural here there's nothing to defend this is this is uh this is a scary moment here for queen he could lose so much oh he brings back the hydras just in time really really good move there killing off that dt is a huge move that's actually a mistake from Bisu because um, he sent in the Corsairs to the main base, which actually triggered Queen to send the Hydras to the main to try and catch the Corsairs. If he hadn't have sent those Corsairs to the bottom right, those Hydras wouldn't have been sent down, then that DT might have got a lot of damage done. Mm, yeah, that's possible. He did want to get in there and check and make sure there wasn't an Overlord, but telegraphing his play a little bit too much, and Queen responding with the Hydras perfectly on time. Just a great reaction time there from Queen. He's going to try and send out Hydras all over the map now. I think he's just barely missed these Zealots heading down to bottom left, though. Yeah, he has missed them. He will... Uh, oh, God, he's not even going to see them. Oh, okay, he will see them with some of these Overlords, but it's going to be a little bit too late. He's going to be starting to engage these Zealots right outside of Bisu's natural, right when these Overlords see the Zealots streamlining in down there. And the Spire's only just about to finish up, so there's no way any meters are going to be out anytime soon. He does try to block a little bit, buys a few precious seconds, but these Zealots are going to get right into the main base and start causing havoc. And he's in tact full tactical with retreat right now, trying to get back into his main base to stabilize and try not to lose any of these important attack buildings too many drones yeah i i hate moves like this from the from the protoss player but yeah, you gotta admit that it is a very strong play he's gonna let one zealot hit the drone line and the rest are going to fight the hydras and now another round of zealots gonna make their way to the front this is queen just about falling apart here uh, under this pressure just good play from good protoss play from uh bisu it's super frustrating to deal with and I'm sure that Queen is getting more and more flustered here. Yeah, Bisu's being very clever with the, the Zelts in the main as well. Like, he, he ran them into the top right corner just to make it really hard for Queen to, like, track them down and kill them all. And that left his uh, third base, like, even more exposed to further attack. So, really great one-two punches coming from Bisu to soften up Queen. Well, Queen is doing okay on supply right now. If he can get some counter damage done in the main base with these muters, there is a little bit of play here for him. There's only going to be Dragoons popping out to defend against this. There are no Sairs in production currently. If he can snipe a few pros, be a little bit annoying and try and utilize some of this air dominance to slope up these Templars as well. Forcing out Storms, even just that alone is going to be huge for him potentially in this game. Yeah, he's going to be able to snipe a lot here, I think. That's quite a few hide or, uh, mutas here and not many Dragoons, just four. He will back away from those, but uh, rotating around here, there's not many cannons to defend and there's almost nothing to defend these Templars. Just a couple cannons, a couple of Dragoons, a nice dodge there. Yeah, forcing out the Storms. Can he actually fly in and kill these Templar, though? That's the real goal right now. If he can get in there, kill off all four of these Templar, then the Hydras 
are in high enough number to probably break this space. We'll have to see, though. Absolutely. Like, without the storms, the Zerg easily overruns the Protoss. So just by skirmishing, forcing out storms, potentially sniping one or two of these High Templars would be a, could end up being a game-winning move here for Queen. If you can just get rid of some of this splash damage, there's not a lot left over of the Protoss infantry to actually fight this kind of critical Hydra mess that we see here from Queen. This is a very strong six-hatch Hydra army. And with the Muta support as well, there's a lot of utility there to soften up the protos before even engaging i gotta say i'm extremely impressed with queen here like the ability to set up this play uh even just to set up don't don't not even considering the actual execution that's going to come up here in a moment i'm extremely impressed he was able to set this up this situation while handling all of that aggression from bisu the run by uh you know the the attack into the third base he, he was under all that pressure and he still managed to you know swing things back into his favor here and find a way a, a way to potentially win this game and he's gonna try and execute it here we'll have to see uh, how that goes but he's at least made himself an option here he's made himself a window an opportunity to win this game yeah, he's taken a seven hatchery in the bottom left as his fourth base, but he has no intention of saturating that just yet. He's just full on unit production for the time being. 140 supply to BC's 146. Just goes to show how many units Queen is able to macro out like a machine. There was once a time where he was extremely dom dominant in this matchup and uh, made it look easy with uh, his strong macro uh, plays into late game. So maybe we can see a little bit of glimmer of that pass shining here. He does catch a little bit of the Sonic Storm onto those mutas, but is is compensating with quite a few of these high templar snipes look at these full energy high templars going down this is big news for queen now he can just overrun this army potentially with this critical mass of hydras flooding in from the west the beast is in full retreat right now trying to secure the high ground there's a few high templars coming in from the north but there's not a lot of storm you can yeah, just look at the flood of hydras right now it's like a ums defense map oh. sam dude the storm though holy crap that storm absolutely insane another great storm here but I don't think it's going to be enough, man. He's pushing forward. Queen is not giving up on this push. He's just going to keep on going. Dude, if he'd sniped those two uh, Templar as they were coming up that ramp, he could have absolutely crushed here. As it stands, he might still just barely be able to push through, but more Templar are coming up. They're very low on that energy. Oh, man. I'm actually covering the uh, energy here. A little bit of mystery from the, uh, the score screen. <laughs> But uh, there we go. We finally do have those uh, storms, but I think he's just barely just not gonna get through. Wow, he's still gonna hold wow. on. Yeah, with the pro pull and the rallied Templars coming out with the, the amulet upgrade, just barely clinching uh, uh, himself from defeat there. And, uh, it's quite crazy seeing um, Bisu in these situations. I think like almost any other Protoss would probably just be straight up dead there. But with those money storms on the ramp and the beautiful execution with the what few units he did have and like consolidating his position on the high ground as well as he did, he's just barely managed just to fight the Berserk force back. And now he wants to go on the counter offense because he doesn't want to let the Zerg create space right now. He doesn't want to let, just let the Zerg trade with him and skirmish with him. He wants to bring the fight to the Zerg and skirmish at his own leisure and deny this space from uh, the Zerg. So if you get on top of the Zerg production and start storming them at their gates, it's much harder for the Zerg army to actually micro back and fight you and storm dodge. Yeah, he's going to send Zealots to the bottom left. Of course, no drones have been sent down there. This was a pretty... I mean, it, it's not an all-in play. We tend to throw that word around a lot. But uh, it was a very high commitment there play from Queen to just send in all the Hydras, just macro out as much as he possibly could without having a thought of the late game here, aside from just putting that base in the bottom left as a placeholder. He wasn't going into Hive tank, he wasn't uh, adding drones to that fourth base, you know, saturating that fourth gas, getting into that later tank. He doesn't even have Lurker right now, so he was truly... Uh, you know committed to that attack and it looks like the answer to the the uh the failed attack here is going to be another big attack with the same idea in mind it's going to be again mutilus swooping in to try and snipe a bunch of templar and another huge hydra rally here to try and end the game um there's really no follow-up here from queen aside from that if you can't make this play work for a second time oh my god the storm on oh, wait what oh, 
<gasps> what just happened? What just happened? He just stormed all of his own Templars. That's a huge blunder from Bisu. I don't know what was going through his brain when he made that play, but he's, he might not be able to live that down. He's, he's He's got a few Templars in reserve, though, so Queen can't make the same mistake of coming up the ramp yet again and just funneling into those storms. He's going to have to go for a different kind of game state here. I think he has to saturate this fourth base and take it to a longer game. There's just no way he can break up here. And I think Bisu knows that. Bisu's trying to drag this game out for a few more minutes where this Hydra only army is going to be a, a lot more obsolete than it is right now but this is a big wide arc for queen to work with now much easier to come into the mutants as well sniping these templars saying this is great for queen he can potentially win this fight as long as he storms just a little bit he's going to be able to overrun these, these goons i think it's a critical error from bc i don't know what we're seeing right now how much money did queen have to pay him to throw this game i don't know but he's all he's got to do is run forward here with those mutants and snipe a couple more templar and he should be able to wipe out this base he stomps the fourth base from going down. The next target should be this third. There's just a few Templar up here on the high ground. Oh, dude, he's he's so close to winning this game. He's just thrown this insanely hard. And I mean, dude, why did he move out there? Why did he storm his own Templar? This is not the type of play we expect from Bisu. The queen is getting a gift here, man. He's getting a massive gift. Yo, queen, queen played like a lot of pro gamers would as Zerg, and even if you are behind a little bit, even if your game plan isn't quite working out, you still just stick with it and you just go for it, and you just, you know, you kind of just hope for the best. Even when you are behind, you play as if you're not behind, because sometimes that's just the only way you can win a Zerg against Protoss. You kind of just have to just, you know, swallow the bullet, bite the bullet, and just go go ahead. Sometimes it works, like we just saw there. And Protoss, Protoss versus Zerg do not have a lot of. Um, vision in these matchups. So Bisu doesn't exactly know what the trajectory of Queen's game plan is. He doesn't know if he's flooding units or trying to saturate his fourth and like consolidate on Hive Tech. He doesn't know exactly what Queen's doing. So we kind of assume that maybe Queen would kind of resort to a little bit more of a, a macro phase after that failed attack. But no, Queen was like kind of like doubling down and just like kind of, you know, bluff him twice basically and like, you know, mm -hmm. catch him with his pants down when he tried to get a little bit too greedy, a little bit too cocky in creating space for his fourth base. Yeah, now he's doing what Bisu I think was afraid that uh, Queen was doing before which is actually taking more bases and setting up for the late game um now that right. he's actually got that that win with that big fight here over on the left hand side he's started to make that transition if he gets another big win here if he snipes a bunch more templar and kills this army again then he's going to get so far ahead there's no way that bisu can come back i think he needs to get over here and secure another base um and take a big fight oh two more big snipes there Great storm dodging from uh, from Queen. I don't think he even needs to push up here. He just needs to back away and uh, wait for this army to come out and try to take this fourth. Yeah, there's still nine Templars on the field, though, so Queen cannot attack into this position. It'd be very foolish of the Zerg to try and win the game by killing this third base. It's much better to maintain the game state, deny the fourth base, and just let this base run dry. Pushing forward with those nine Templar. How many are going to get sniped before this fight? Great storm here on the ramp. He's pushing forward as best he can. This is a small Protoss army, and the storm dodging is pretty good. It's not great, but this is such a wide arc of Hydras. It's so hard to control on all fronts here. He is eating some big storms on the bottom side. Whoa! Everything falling apart there for Queen right near the end. Well, it just goes to show you how hard this matchup is. No matter how strong the Zerg might look, it, with the right storms, with with the Zerg not looking at the right times, it, it can just completely rip apart the army. There is still a contingency of Hydra trying to make its way up from the southern threshold to snipe some of these high Templars, but Bisu's quick to react to that, and uh, he's, he's got a quick response force going uh, online right now, trying to clear up as much of this small uh, threats of Hydras out on the map as possible, preventing them from reaching the critical mass that they need to keep fighting this Protoss. That will give the breathing room a Bisu needs to finally take his fourth base he's been on one base economy for a while now and without this fourth base he's going to be a little bit of trouble so now that he has this breathing room he's going to be feeling a lot more comfortable yeah you're right about this matchup being extremely hard when you've got this many hydras you have to spread them out as much as possible but at the same time you, you you're with the spread you're not going to be able to have them all on one uh screen so you can't see where the storms are being thrown down and dodge properly oh running back in a little bit too soon here there on the right hand side he loses all the hydras here and it looks like bisu 
gonna push through for the win. Queen just doesn't have much left over. So many storms here, and now he's gonna make another three more Archons. That army is way too powerful. Queen taps out, and Bisu takes quite the victory here, man. What? the heck was that game oh, that crazy game set i don't know what we just saw it looked like i don't know it looked like both players like were like underground gamblers and both bet on themselves to lose and they were trying to find creative <laughs> ways to throw the game or something at first i didn't know what i was watching you know what i mean but um yeah no kind of kind of crazy and queen almost took it down bisu so even though we did see uh, queen fall apart there he was microing on three fronts with those hydras is very challenging to do to storm dodge three different screen locations at the same time with such a wide arc of hydras it's also uh, so difficult that you don't have the hydras all shooting at once which means you don't have the dps required to whittle down the protoss force um, as speedily as you're able to to actually start to win the fight so while you're storm dodging and the goons and the zealots are just raining down on you with their phase disruption shots and the side blades cutting through you you just don't have the trading occurring that you need you're, you're just banking on the templars running out of storm so you can just sit there and shoot like you want to but most of the time you can't and the storms just skirmish of you all day long until you finally get your army wheel down to a nub yeah nine templars they can basically set up an area of uh, just area of effect damage aoe damage completely surrounding the protoss army for you know 10 15 20 seconds uh, continuously basically so you have to be aware of the fact that there's just going to be over and over again storms again and again and again and there there's no real good solution to it um aside from a transition into lurker and eventually getting into defiler but that was just not the plan there from Queen. He stuck with his game sense. He stuck with that one strategy, which is Mass Hydra and a large group of Mutas to try and snipe all the Templar. I mean, what what was that with the storm on his own Templar? That was craziness. That almost cost me to see that game, man. That, that was like the biggest blunder we've seen for a while in KCM. For our next game here, we've got Light versus Bisu. A classic match here on Radeon. Vertical spawns. This should be a blast, man. Um, as a... Uh... As a, I think it's a Jim Rayner, the Vulture unit uh, voice line would say, uh, this should be good. <laughs> this should be good, man. Oh. Uh, what? What? Huh? Huh? Uh, Green casters going wild about the pylon? I'm not sure. <laughs> Why are they freaking out? I have no idea. Um, one thing to mention, guys, HMall this week, the extra prize is a bunch of donuts. So, um... <gasps> Yeah. Oh, they're freaking out because it's 12 Nexus. Because Bisu would have probably made the gateway in his natural if he was doing any other, anything else. Mm. I think that's why they're freaking out. They're, really? they're assuming it's 12, they're assuming 12 Nexus because if it was going to be gateway first, he would want to put it in his natural expansion because of how bad the rush distances are on this map. Mm. Oh, sure. Well, if it is indeed 12 Nexus, looks like it is now that we've got 300 minerals in the bank. The next probe going to be sent out to the natural. Nexus first against Light. I think it's a good play because Light rarely ever rushes, does anything really fancy in the early game. So playing standard, we're going to get this Nexus down. And like you said, long rush distances on this map. Bisu should be able to pull this off. Yeah, he should be able to get away with this. And like you say, Light's not the kind of guy to really like dial in these really finely tuned uh, counter rushes that we see to punish 12 next. So someone like Sharp is going to be taking that gas at 11, getting that factory and vulture just a teeny tiny bit quicker, coming in and punishing the economy of the Protoss player, maybe by sniping a probe or two, or at least forcing uh, pro pulls and what have you right before the goons are popping out. But we're not going to see anything like that here from Light. So it looks like so far Bisu going to be getting away a murder here even throwing down the double gate just to make sure he's extra safe here so you probably make the gas at 16 as well and uh then he'll make two zealots and two goons but if he wants to be super greedy he could choose to also not make uh, both of those zealots yeah well it depends on what he sees with this first uh, probe 
Um, you'll have to get in here, see if there's going to be a pull. And actually, this timing, this, this scout here, means that Light is just not going to know for the longest possible time. He's scout bottom left. He'll probably scout top left after, and he's not going to find the Nexus until the last possible moment. I think the Bisu can skip the Zealots here, no problem. Yeah, I mean, he might still just make one single Zealot, mm. but yeah, usually you'd make two Zealots into two Dragoons, which also gives you some aggression options after you defend the rush. You can then, like, pressure the bunker and uh, actually, you know, potentially do a lot of damage to the Terran play with just two Zealot, two Goon as a follow-up. Uh, looks like Light's going to be putting on a little bit of uh, pressure, moving out with those uh, first few Marines, see if maybe there is a little bit of play here. Because if, if he if Pichu does get super greedy and decides, hang on a minute, I'm just uh, going to make one single Zealot here, and uh, maybe there's a bit of play there. But it looks like, no, Light actually opting not for that. I think, like we were saying earlier, he's not so comfortable with this kind of, like, you know, putting on, like, small skirmishy pressure in the early game and, like, doing, like, technical bunker rushes and stuff. Uh, it's not really his uh, cup of tea. And look at this. Look at... Ooh! Now, with manual move command, you can still... Yeah, see? With manual move command, you can still catch up to the SCV, and Bisu uh, obviously has a, a, a pro game of his esteem, going to be able to know how to do that, and gliding across that hex grid like a magician to catch back up to the SCV after losing a little bit of speed on the, the cliffer. Yeah, just Light not seeing anything is the problem here. Light just wasn't able to scout for so long. He sent the Marines out. Uh, if he had seen the Nexus first in the top left, he would have brought those Marines forward to try and do something, but he saw nothing up there. And so he has no idea what the build is, and he just sent the Marines home to be safe. And now Bisu, he's got the Dragoons out here in the front. He's got the wall. Dude, Bisu is in such a good spot here. I don't know what Light can do to bring this back. He's got the, the uh, CC down, but he's got to find some... Uh, corners to cut here to actually get himself back into a good uh, position. I mean, yeah, the only the only reason I would say um, another Protoss player wouldn't enjoy this game state is just because they would be intimidated by the fact that it's light. Any other reason, I'm sure they'd be loving this game state. He has isolated this one Dragoon, though, mining behind the line of that Dragoon, going to be keeping it out on the map, and now these Marines can come and uh, force this Goon. Oh, Bisu anticipates it. Bisu knows that this Goon's isolated, and if he doesn't get it out now, he's going to probably lose it, so he just soaks up the mine here anyway, just to keep his Goon numbers healthy enough that he can start to fight this back more with a frontal engagement rather than having to worry about this one Dragoon like getting caught out of uh, position here. Oh, uh, you cannot push this, man. I don't think you can push this at all. Because uh, no, the uh, Nexus first, you're going to have so many units. These are just non as long as he makes non-stop Dragoons, he's going to shut this down hard. Um, running forward here, he's got the four Dragoons. A fifth one does arrive and Light loses a Vulture. He loses a Marine. The Observer is about to pop out here. And when that comes, then full uh, area control, full map control going to go to Bisu. I mean, the threat of mines does kind of save the day for Light a little bit there. He didn't lose the tank on the retreat. That's that's a little bit of compensation for this failed attempt here. He was trying to punish Bisu. Bisu was doing something a little bit greedy and uh, maybe he didn't open up with 12 Nexus and maybe, you know, just stayed on one gateway for a while. And it's possible that he would have found some damage there if this was a different situation. But with this rush distances, with the 12 Nexus opening, like, no way is uh, Light going to do anything to Bisu in this situation. Situation. And now Bisu is going to be very comfortable just to come out onto the map, clear out all the mines that he can find, and he'll take his uh, third at a leisurely time. Seven minutes is usually the kind of standard timing, but if he wants to, he can even take it right now. Yeah, he could absolutely do that. And, you know, funny uh, situation happened to me really recently. Uh, Love Snow called me on Discord, and just for the uh, purpose of telling me that. Uh, the Nexus first actually does have a counter and Sharp discovered it. It's putting out mines and going for a really fast third base. Um, mm. I don't think we're going to see a third base here, though. I, I feel like Light is playing in kind of the older style, um, not taking a page out of Sharp's book here. He's going to try and put some pressure on. And, dude, just Bisu has way too much, man. He's got so many units. And this is so many dragoons. He's easily going to wipe away these vultures. And he's in a really uh, bad situation where he could end up losing a lot of tanks here if he's not careful. 
Yeah, but just just while well, while we while we're still on this topic, uh, mine's into third. I've I've discussed it with Wolfix at length. It's such a great way of playing against this style, but unfortunately, a lot a lot of Terran players are comfortable playing that style, and they seem to uh, botch it up and uh, can't really quite execute it to, to pull it off. So we don't really see it that often. But it's such a strong technical build to counteract uh, the greed of 12 Nexus, but not many Terran players are familiar with it and uh, a little bit hesitant to switch up their play style completely by going for something like that. Like Light's trying to get some stuff done here. He's laying down mines behind enemy lines. He's seeing if he can snipe the, the probe making the Nexus maybe, but he's a little bit too slow to that party. And uh, no, he's attacking his own Nexus there for a second. Bisu is like all over the place with his mouse right now. I'm wondering if he's like not charged his wireless mouse enough or something because we've seen some interesting clicks here from him today. Yeah, for sure. The storms, the, the clicking on your own Nexus, uh, probably coming stemming from the same issue. We're going to be going into Arbiter here. Um, I mean, it's a great choice from Bisu. You've got so much of an advantage right now. You're going to have this pretty quick Nexus coming down. The probe count's going to be really, really high, and the gateway count's just going to explode here shortly. Uh, the Arbiter's kind of just icing on the cake here to have that extra uh, bit of utility in the army to shut down whatever Light is going to try to do to you here coming up. Oh, yeah, we do see a scan in the natural. Oh, he sees the shuttle just barely. If he was looking for a moment there, he would have seen the shuttle, but I don't think he was looking at that moment, so he has no idea exactly uh, what tools will be in Bisu's arsenal. He can assume, of course, it's quite common at this stage in the game to have shuttles and uh, zealot bombing and what have you, so he will be making the prerequisites or like optimal for Goliaths, which can two-shot a shuttle and uh, take out observers and single volleys and what have you, so he will, he will also have the tools necessary to, to fight against Bisu, but... So far, I much uh, I think I much prefer Bisu's uh, position and and, flow, and how the the ebb and flow of the game has developed does seem to very favour Bisu. Light's a very experienced player though, and I also think Light's uh, probably one of the better players at playing from behind. So I certainly wouldn't be counting him out any time yet. Yeah, he's he's still got some play here for sure. He's gonna hit the timings, a hundred percent. He's gonna hit his macro. Uh, th these are the things that we always expect from a player like Light, but. I, the, the tactical advantage here is massive. He does see the Arbiter, though. That's a big scan. Knowing exactly yeah, what's coming scan. here is, is going to help him to prepare uh, appropriately for that. Though There's not a huge amount that you can do to prepare for this, aside from just start uh, your science facility and, and get into EMP. No, I think you're right, saying. And with the 10-minute third, I mean, this is a respectable timing here for Light. He's making it on location, too. I mean, if he can hold anything that BC throws at him for the time being, He's probably going to be looking pretty healthy going in from the mid to late game phase. It's just that BC will be having a slight edge going forward. Yeah, BC probably just going to grab his fourth here. Um, adding on those extra gateways, he doesn't have the numbers quite yet to try and break this. So he's just going to fall back here, grab that extra base, really solidify his economy here, and uh, gear up for this next stage of the game, which will be, you know, light sitting here, just charging on uh, on three base, getting into his next level of uh, upgrades here. He's done plus one, and he's only just now started his starport. So the timing is a little slower, but the, the compensation is, of course, that uh, much quicker third base. Now, Bisu is taking 12 o'clock as his fourth, so if he wants to stay on full base for a while, this does give a, a bit of a win condition for Light. If he can somehow like hold off a big attack and then push him, he can contain the rally point and potentially win from that. But look at this Arbiter coming in. He does have a stasis available, but beautiful spread of tanks. Oh, that's a nice clump, though. Gets the vultures and two tanks uh, for that effort, so really great stasis. Now he's starting to overrun these tank positions effortlessly. Bisu looks like he's just unstoppable at the moment, cleaning up Light. Wow. Like... It, it, it seems like Bisu has like relegated himself to like being a janitor and he's just having fun like cleaning. Maybe he just f f find something like Zen about cleaning up or something. So. Well, we're going to have some tanks here on the high ground, but the Zealots clearing out those tanks over at this third base. That means the third likely just going to fall here. And I mean, like he just set up those tanks on the high ground. He's going to have to unseize those, walk down the ramp, come all the way around. Uh, and, you know, try to get over here to start to clean up this attack. But in the meantime, probably the CC going to fall. Dude, everything just fell apart here for Light so darn quickly. And that, you know, third base that we were just praising him for taking so quickly is looking like just a, a terrible error here for Light. 
It, it does look bad uh, with the current game state, but I have to say, like, if he's going to win the game, that's the kind of play yeah. he has to make. So, no, you're right. <laughs> yes, it's, it's a bad situation, but you, you have to play like you're not behind to be able to eventually have a chance at winning. So sometimes you got to make these uh, decisions that are not necessarily the most optimal given the game state, but they are also going to be a necessary evil going forward. Yeah, you have to rely on your opponent to make some sort of mistake or, uh, you know, not attack maybe when they should um, in order to take an advantage back from such a rough position here. But it looks like Bisu just going to extend his lead far beyond what Light could possibly... Um, like, what kind of risks can Light even hope to take at this point uh, to bring himself back? What do you do? Like, double expand here? Like, that's basically the only way yeah. you could bring things back. You, you try a ninja expand, yeah, basically. Double expand. So you, yeah, you take, you take this, and then you take a ninja expansion, and then you, you do some vulture drops and stuff. Like, this vertical axis on the right-hand side, you could exploit with drop ships a little bit. So you could do a little bit of uh, vulture drops just to try and be a little bit annoying to a beast. The problem is he doesn't have any resources really at play, so every resource right now is being dumped into his factories because he can't even produce 24-7 production out of the production facilities he's already got. So he, he's struggling for money right now, and he's... So every money he does get is going into units. He's like 30 supply um, below what he needs to hold this 200-200 army yeah. from Visu. Uh, it's going to come in, look for a stasis. He's got all the time in the world. Oh, a recall. Really into the back line. Zealots here. And then the attack into the front is going to come through. Um, interesting move here from Visu to use, utilize the recall into the back line. Uh, I don't think it's going to matter either way. There's just way too much stuff here, but it's a cute little move to finish this game off. Yeah, I mean, he did, it's kind of coming into fashion a little bit, isn't it? Like the pure mm. zealot recall onto the Terran siege tanks does seem to be a good way to dislodge these uh, siege tank formations. There's probably a lot of guys in the YouTube comments like finally being like, yes, I was right all along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, that was uh, that was a pretty standard 12 Nexus game, right? Where the Protoss gets away with superior greed here. Um, and the Terran just not able to bring it back. Not able to punish. Not able to take their own greed. And making Protoss look busted here. Bisu once again taking victory in the KCM. All kills still on the table here. That sweet 2,200,000 won is uh it's looking pretty tasty right now for bisu all he needs to do is uh, kill a couple more zerg players he's got to get through hero here who's down in the bottom right and action who's waiting in the wings um a tall order but i think bisu's up to the challenge yeah there's three more games it'll be a hero rush and an action in a row if you can do all three of those players then he's going to be getting a nice little tasty 2.2 million yeah, it's about 2,000 US dollars, uh, roughly. But, um, I mean, the reverse could happen too. We can see Hero turn around and kill all three of these Protoss players. That's a complete possibility. Oh, Rush. Absolutely. Rush could do the same, right, if Hero can't make it happen. Mm -hmm. But what we're, we're going to have to watch and see here. I want to see um, Long Sears. I don't want to see Bisu take out all these players and... We only go to six games or whatever. Uh, hopefully, Hero can can bring this one back. I've been watching a lot of this guy lately. Um, did a segment on my channel recently with uh, watching these point of view games uh, on the ladder. And dude, this guy he makes some great decisions. He's a very very smart Zerg player. Yeah, I watched a little bit of that video actually, and he's one of my favorite Zerg players. It's crazy how good he is and how underrated he is at the same time. I've said this so many times in KCM cast, and I cannot, over I cannot overstate that enough. It's insane how good this guy is. Yeah, he's he's not quite, you know, been that champion. You know, he's always doing well. He's always placing round of eight, round of four, and performing pretty good, but never quite going all the way. And he's good enough to pretty much take on everyone. He, he has a very wide range of play. He can do any cheese any macro build you can possibly think of this guy can execute it at between 400 and 500 apm he's an extremely solid player it's a shame we haven't seen him go all the way in asl um i would like to see that one day yeah for sure well uh this is gonna be a massive challenge for him here bisu absolutely on fire in this matchup especially and he's gonna come in 
right away here with the probe and Zealot. He's already dealt, dealt a little damage with the probe. And he's tar trying to target down to finish off some of these drones, but looks like he won't be able to. Great surround there on the probe. And he will get the surround here. Follow up on the Zealot. Does kill his way out of that surround, though. Zealot picks off one of those links to open up some space for himself. Oh, the Zealot actually getting glitched over the... Uh, the, the mineral patch there, that was a little bit close. And the second Zealot's gonna get caught uh, in between all of these drones. That is a huge moment here for Hero, clearing that out very nicely. Now the probe gonna sit back here, try to deal some extra damage and it will pull out as the Zealot dies, but it does go down as well. So really great hold here from Hero, handling that beautifully. Uh, and I mean, the, the, the pressure was good there from Bisu, but Hero just, moving his lings like no other. Uh, I think Hero can, if he wanted to, potentially do an all-in ling here, maybe kill Bisu. He will pull probes to defend, so it's not like a guaranteed way of winning or anything, but there's a lot of pressure here that Hero could levy against Hero. Uh, sorry, levy against a Bisu, and Hero could like maybe even kill this gateway, potentially, if he did flood lings behind this. He was considering a den being thrown down there for a second, but hesitated. Yeah, he knows that there's some pressure he can... I think Hero's just thinking to himself, I could go for the kill here and try and punish Bisu, but if I make a mistake and that doesn't work, I'm probably just dead. So rather than take that risk, I'll just take my small advantage and go home with it and just macro up and do the kind of crazy mid to late game uh, game plan I had in mind from the start already. Right. Yeah, I... I, I... I imagine the Cybernetic score being in the wall in here uh, at the Protoss Natural is probably going to factor into that decision making. Uh, you're not going to be able to pick off the plus one if you do end up having to transition out of the Hydralisk uh, all in. Uh, you know, into or a Hydralisk rush into, you know, more of a macro play. You're not going to be in as good of a spot with that plus one still finishing there in the main. So. Now, uh, Hero, right. he's going to try and play this out uh, a little bit more normally. And we're seeing this again from Bisu, right? The four Zealots walk across the map. He's just threatening here. He wants you to build more Lings. And then he's just going to walk home, pick up another Zealot, maybe threaten a little bit more. But he will not be coming out here. And it looked, it worked perfectly again. Look at that. Another, like, eight Lings were produced by Hero. He had to make, he had to make those. And now he's, you know, cut some of those drones that Bisu wanted him to cut. Yeah, it's like a one-way Protoss can uh, keep Zergs honest and not go too crazy with the power droning. It's, it is kind of insane just how many drones a, a Zerg player can get if you leave them unchecked. So Bisu is just making sure all the checks and balances have been made and the hero's not going to be getting away of anything crazy here. He knows how good hero's macro is, so he can't afford to allow him just to drone leisurely. Yeah, so it's also a way you can uh, check to see if there's Hydralis coming, right? If you're that far across the map with the Zealots, Absolutely. you see if you, you should be able to see if Hydras are coming and you can start to build cannons back at home. If they're right in front of your natural, when you see it, you can't really get the cannons out. But if they're across the map, there's a good chance that you can let, help them to finish or let them finish with the Zealots delaying. But here we're going to have a Hydra swapping out to defend the Corsair. I guess that he wasn't able to get into his uh, his lair in time and get that Spire out to save the, the Overlord here. So he's just going to resort to Hydra play to keep those alive. Yeah, and sniping these overlords doesn't just serve as like a way of uh, supply blocking the zerg. It actually also serves the purpose of slowing down the sick hatchery because every extra overlord they have to make is another 100 minerals that's going to be delayed in this sick hatchery going down, which is going to, you know, eat into their potential hydro production later on and just make the, the zerg much more of an uh, easier threat to deal with. Mini game going on right now as Bisu sweeps the map for these all overlords. He will find this one over here. There's one more in the middle of the map that he could be found and killed and that will definitely slow the, down the production of those buildings the the extra hatcheries as you said so uh more kills that bisu can get the better off he's going to be here hero oh i think he's gonna find this dude bisu wow yeah he found every overlord wow 
Like, I'm really impressed with Bisu. It's crazy how well he's been playing recently. Uh, you were saying earlier about not wanting to see him go on a spree and kill everyone. In a way, it would be kind of fun just to see him like go crazy and like dunk on these greenhorns that think they know what's up. But at right. the same time, I also agree with you. It would be nice just to see a bit more of an interesting series where it goes back and forth. But look at that surviving of 2 HP on that Corsair. Does God just favor this guy or something? Like, what's going on here? Yeah, the stars, man, are in alignment here for Bisu to take an all kill this man is looking to be uh just just so lucky <laughs> at the same time so lucky but also so good like you can't put it all up to luck but that was pretty darn lucky they managed to find every overlord here that uh, hero was trying desperately to ob obfuscate on the map now we don't have overlord speed just yet with this dt out there's no attacking that can be done by hero but he should be able to drone up a little bit more here we still haven't seen a six hatch though Dude, yeah. he's really slowed down Hero a lot here. Well, he might be forced to transition into just going like uh, air dominance now. He might just go up to like 10 meters and just tri triple mine gas and just uh, play that way. He, he might have like railroaded his build a lot because of this. I think right. it's really slowed him down. Yeah, he does have the third gas. Look at that. He Bisu even going to scout it. He loses to the Corsair, but dude, this is crazy. There's the Spire. Just seeing the third guess, you don't need to see the Spire to know kind of what's coming here. Yeah, he just doesn't have the kind of like power spike or production he wanted. He will still have a lot of Hydras, don't get me wrong. It's just that he doesn't have that kind of swelling that he'll need. Like at, th at that stage of the game, he would have had like one hatch per gateway. and He would have had such a powerful production to work with. And now he's kind of playing catch up. Bisu's already racing ahead in the gateway count. He's going to have a very strong 10-11 uh, minute timing to move onto the map. So yeah, I don't know how I feel about this. I'm a little bit concerned for Hero going forward, but uh, obviously out in the open, anything can happen. He is going to be catching some of these zealots are out of, out of position and if the zergings could wrap around he would be able to isolate a few of them and kill them oh a little bit of a glitch they're happening onto those zealots so uh, they got uh, glitched out for a second and couldn't move so almost caught a few of those but look at this i actually feel like a hero can't really attack into this and usually against a zealot templar you just want to skirmish and keep micring back and keep forcing a fight and you do you do want to force a fight is the issue is that you, you kind of want to just keep attacking with the hydras and every time they storm you back out and come back in again and just keep forcing storms and just skirmishing over and over again but you need to create that space first we need to keep bisu on his side of the map and then allow himself to just keep skirmishing back towards his production line over and over again but instead he's wanting to do the muta switch so he's not wanting to commit any of these hydras to that kind of skirmish way of playing he wants to instead snipe all the high templars first but bisu's already read into that and he's got maelstrom on the way yeah i was about to ask you do you think we're gonna see maelstrom here we're gonna have a dark archon and there it is it appears before our very eyes the dark archon is ready for this play from hero and if he kills all of the mutas it's pretty much an instant gg right he's not going to be able to snipe the templar right. and the the right. templar zealot dragon dragon will allow him to take these four bases no problem he'll be able to take the base here at the six uh and he'll be able to take his uh mineral only there out, out at the front and it'll just be lights out for hero but uh, we've seen some players split off like small contingents of mutas like they'll fly in with like four or five yeah, uh, mutas exactly. and you don't know that it's actually uh four mutas you might think that it's 12 and then you use the maelstrom in the storm to kill that and then you know another six or eight uh mutas fly in and kill everything so we'll see he's gonna see the art he sees the dark archon that's big the maelstrom gets used already that's all the energy on the dark archon he can fly in and get this now yeah, he can. Um, I, I, maybe Bisu didn't realize that there were actually Hydra, so maybe a little bit of miscalculation for Bisu. And now Hero just dive bombing in. There is a storm, but now the storm is storming his own. He just kills his own observer as well. A little bit of a, a blunder there from Bisu. He's in full panic mode, but this move from Hero might be a bit of a mistake because all these units can be out of position. If he doesn't kill this Nexus as compensation, I'm not sure this is a valuable oh, trade. Get this or not. Temple, it's temple, a, temple, temple, oh, oh, the temple, 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 <laughs> the full eight, the full energy temple are gonna get hit from behind he's got one more one more here he dodges perfect dodge there from hero wow. dude hero playing out of his mind right now and bisu making a huge error by wasting that uh maelstrom a little bit before the fight here the nexus goes down hero just took a huge win
Wow, Hero's in a great position now. Like, if, if, if Isu could consolidate, keep this third alive, Hero is going to have to transition and, and switch up his game plan a little bit. But now he doesn't have to worry about that. He slowed down the production and the economy of the Pros player so much that he's going to be sitting pretty on this four base production. He can just churn out units, set up a soft contain, and then just force more and more trades. And he knows that this army's isolated at six, so he's just pushing the army back to the, the natural. And now he's going to come in for a kill move to see if he can slide up all these uh, Dragoons as well. He could, he could even look at egg block this ramp here. Yeah, he's going to block a little bit here, the Zealots, and focus down as many Dragoons as he can. He knows that the Templar won't be able to arrive in time to save these, and picking off all these important uh, cost, uh, very, very costly units. Oh, the DT over here maybe got a few kills, uh, but does get picked off. Uh, Hero dealing with a lot on two different fronts and really coming out ahead on both sides. Very, very wow. well done by him. I think just perfect decision making, like I was saying before, uh, the game started here is just so good at understanding the game state and what he needs to do. This guy gives me goosebumps. Like I already rate him so highly and almost every time I watch him play, almost every time I watch him play, I still am surprised and I, and I get nerd chills. And I, there's not many players that can do that to me. There's something special about this guy. I, I swear, I swear. Hmm. Well, we're gonna have four zealots make their way over here to the top right this is something that bisu needs to do right now he needs to slow down this uh fourth base the economy that's going to spike up here for uh hero very very soon but at the same time he does need to get this third base up and he is allowing the cannons to go down over here meanwhile we've got some mutas heading over towards the top right they're going to clear out the zealots um it looks like Misu wow. going to take wins on both sides, but he loses the Nexus. Hatchery goes down, though. Okay, that was a trade I think that Misu is going to be pretty happy with. I still think this favors the Zerg, though. I agree with you that Abisu is going to be like happy that he got the hatchery, but mm. I kind of feel like Hero is using this fourth as a bit of a bait base as well. He never really saturated. There was only ever like five or six drones mining there at any one time. I feel like he's just using this as like a pull Bisu's army out of position so we can keep going for these like little uh, special tactics gambits to keep slowing down this third base. Now we're a full muta stack. If there's no Maelstrom, you can just come in, clean up some of these Dragoons and threaten the Templars as, as they uh, come in from the east here. He's going to get on top of the Templars. It's like at least two of them here, I believe. And he does get one good uh, storm on these retreating Hydras. But now that he cleans up all of the storms available to Bisu, he's going to also come be attacked at 6 o'clock yet again. But the beautiful storm is going to be delaying uh, the inevitable of uh, the rest of those cannons going down. So he does maintain some kind of defensive position at 6 o'clock, does Bisu. But the supplies are currently dead even, which does favor the Zerg. Yeah, dude, if he had just like another one more control group of Hydras here, I think he could have just busted right through Bisu there. A little bit frustrating for Hero right now, but uh, he is going to keep that pressure on, keep on flying in with more Mutas. Uh, the, the stack is getting kind of low, though. One more storm on that. All those Mutas just might explode. Another round of Mutas comes out. Okay, he's going back up to 12. He's just going to keep this pressure on, and I do not blame him in the slightest. He's done a great job of sniping Templar so far. If he just gets a few more and brings the Hydras together, he might just be able to straight up win now. Nice job. T picks off two more Templar. I think this might be the tipping point. I think this might just be unless there's oh there is one there's two more templars coming up if he can snipe those with the hydras from behind this would be huge but he doesn't quite have the timing to do that so instead he's gonna be trying to fight on two fronts here Bisu has just barely enough to maybe hold this off but there is still enough hydras that he can whittle down the dragoon count over and over again and this is the problem here it's like in pvt if you keep getting your tank count reset over and over again you don't really have the, the, the standing army required to trade well anymore and that's what we're seeing here we're seeing the protoss being quarantined and now with both bases being mined out, he's going to be resorted, uh, resorting to just one base worth of economy to work with, and that's not going to be enough of a, a production to actually churn out all of uh, all of all of these gateways uh, non-stop. So eventually, Hero is going to come out ahead. Yeah, Hero has the base in the top right. He's spreading his hydras through the middle of the map. This is a really important thing uh, in this type of scenario. If you allow like four zealots to run up into the top right could actually ruin your game at this point. Um, it's happened already once before. If it happens again, it could just end the game here for Hero. So he's got to make sure that nothing is 
uh, heading in that direction. So he's really spreading his overlords out now. He's coming around the back. He's got quite a few uh, mutas here ready to dive on top of these Templar. Templar casting their storms well uh, beforehand to try and preempt the dive here. But really good dodging from Hero picks off most of them. But still two Templar do remain. Yeah, it does make it a lot harder for Bisu to secure his fourth, though. He wants to take his fourth right this second, but he probably doesn't feel like he can. He has the probe just chilling here, and he he might still take the Nexus in a moment and then cancel it if he needs to, but he doesn't feel as comfortable when taking this fourth as he'd like to, and he really desperately needs two base worth of production. He's not going to get it for some time. Yeah, he's got two base worth of probes mining on one base, and he needs that extra mineral income here comes the storm on the left hand side is actually so good oh my god he like dodged back and forth in and out of that storm and is it actually still not going to be enough that great storm still not good enough here to take down hero his advantage is too big he runs over this army and he's going to clear up all the important units all the dragons all the templar that is it gg gg damn that last fight dude Hero almost messed that up, I feel like. He ate so much Storm, but he did have enough. Yeah, he did just out-macro Bisu in that game. Very tactical awareness of the game state to really abuse Bisu and force enough interactions that he just couldn't get the production going that he needed to stabilize in that game state and eventually was overcome by the onslaught of Hero. Hero is the hero we need. I'm not sure we deserve him right now. I need to see the other Zerg players step it up a little bit. Dude, hero. Uh, just, just imagine if that maelstrom had gone onto the the mutas. But this is peak. Yeah. This is peak ZVP, man. This is this is the fun, like tactical, uh, really down and dirty Zerg versus Protoss that we like to see with uh, groups of Hydras, mutas, Templar, Dragoon, Zealot. Just that raw Protoss versus Zerg. Uh, storm dodging and you know really excellent excellent decision making from both sides I, I love to see it man this is this is exactly what we're here for kcm week two wait week three excuse me will continue now with hero starting his run can he all kill now the protoss side he's got to get through rush first let's jump into that game well, that was some peak KCM there. Hero versus Bisu was an absolute banger. I didn't think we were going to get any better than Bisu versus Queen, but I feel like that was even more exciting. Oh, no, that was. That was crazy. And you don't usually see ZVPs like that because it's so easy to go wrong for the Zerg. Usually Zerg, when they try and play this sort of like piecemeal skirmishy style, it only goes well if you're like using, say, like six or seven Hydra's like snipe off Templars on the flank or something. When you're like trying to like deny bases and like obfuscate what you're trying to do. The fact that he hid his mutas for so long as well and kind of forced out the Maelstrom onto the Hydras rather than allowing the mutas to be... Because he was so composed, it, it, everything aligned for him. And it, a lot of players wouldn't have had the kind of composure and discipline in that situation to like obfuscate the build for that long and, and dive in at the perfect moment like that. While Beast has been eliminated, still we have another versus Zerg specialist here, Rush. This man is incredibly good at getting in there uh, at the proper time. You know, busting through sunken colonies is his uh, his main state. This dude is uh, living up to his reputation in most of his games. Rush is a namesake. We'll see what kind of rush he pulls out here. What kind of game plan is going through his head right now after watching Hero just play the you know the game of his life there against Bisu? What is he going to uh, pull out here to try and take down Hero? Yeah, have to wait to see. We do see Hero in the 12 o'clock position, which is the most mineral optimized position that he could have gotten. So I'm sure he's happy about that. Could be going into a two hatch muta play. It looks like. Probably going to get uh, four lings out once his pool. Oh, actually, no, it's a 12, 12, 12. My bad. Excuse me. This is going to be a 2.5 hatch. All right, with the 2.5 hatch, you're going to have a lot of economy to work with, plenty of larva to use at your disposal. 
But uh, you're not going to have too many early lings here. You're going to be trying to cut as many lings as possible as you can. And you get that hatchery out as quickly as you can. So there is an opportunity here possibly for Rush to do something like put a bunker behind the mineral patches or try to get a bunker rush rolling here. And he's going to go up to the front, try to poke at this drone. Will he build the bunker? Looks like he's actually mm -hmm. left the other Marines back at home. He's hoping to force like six lings here. Yeah, he's, he, it, these are the kind of tactical things that you can do as Terran to really disrupt the Zerg. And a really advanced Terran versus Zerg player understands all these t fine nuance um, transitional points of Zerg to really exploit to exploit those positional points of weakness so that they're not as lava e efficient. So if they do have to make one pair of lings when they wouldn't normally, it does completely throw off the timings of the Zerg. In fact, the reason why you saw um, so many minerals for Hero earlier is because you can't actually make the third hatchery until you make the spire. Because if you notice, when he um, made the spire, or sorry, sorry, the lair, when he made the lair, he went down to 292 minerals. So if he'd made the hatchery, he wouldn't have been able to make the lair on time when he had 100 gas. So it's crazy how like finely tuned these builds are, where it sometimes actually looks kind of weird where they got like loads of money banked up for no reason. Well, he's going to be getting that spire down here pretty pretty darn soon. He will be throwing down the gas and then right after the gas into a couple of sunken colonies because he spotted the two barracks follow up here from Rush in the main. It was a really risky maneuver sending in the Overlord to, to confirm that, but he managed to keep that alive and get the confirmation on the two racks. So he knows exactly what's coming here. He can get the sunken colonies on time. He's not going to have Muta to deal with it on time here with the 2.5 hatch it's just gonna be a little bit too crisp the timing here from rush yeah look at this little uh overlord spot dude we had the same thing on butter right you have these like little dead zones here and a lot of terran players are really complaining about that and i think the compensation on this map was like we're gonna put that spot a little bit closer to the natural and so you can't see as deep into the main as you can mm. on butter and i think that's a nice little compensation don't you agree yeah i think so it's uh, still going to frustrate Rush a lot here because he did get into the main base, but he took a big risk by sending that in, right? He almost lost right. that Overlord. Um, if he loses the early Overlord, you are so far behind, and Rush had that opportunity to pick that off. He just wasn't quite able to get that. Now he's moving out with the two racks. Uh, Firebat is involved here as well. We've got a Marine, um, but Lings are going to run by and actually slow things down. And uh, I mean, this is great. It doesn't really need to stop Rush from going across the map, though. It's just got to delay a few units because he did build two Sunkins back at home. So, I mean, you're not going to break through here. Yeah, and, and just uh, one thing that I really want to point out about Hero is that he had that mapped out where even if he had lost that Overlord, he could have still lost those Lings and had enough supply left over to make the exact amount of mutas he still wanted to make. Mm. Yeah, you can do a lot with the, the 2.5 hatch, man. You've got a lot more larva, a lot more minerals. You can get the drones a lot quicker. So, you know, he's, he's done a great job maneuvering himself here. He's got the seven mutas coming in at the right time. We're about 16, 15, or 6 minute 15 seconds. He flies into the main, and look at this. Rush is not ready. That is a shock. Usually, Rush will have these up in time, and now he's going to start to lose SCVs. This is really, really good play by a hero he's got the timings on this done perfectly and with that information he got from that early overlord uh he's managed to find himself into a you know find it find a really good spot here um where rush is just not going to be able to dislodge these mutas and he's gotten a bunch of kills here rush is not even on the map to pressure him at all so he can even pick off this supply depot he doesn't need to leave just yet I get chills watching Hero play, man. It's just so fascinating. Like, he he got, uh, like, a se a seven or eight SEV kills, and he knows that he only needs six to be in a good position. So once he gets, like, six, seven, eight, he's like, okay, that's enough. I'll just come here. I'll kill I'll kill a depot. I'll make sure I don't make any any errors in my retreat so I don't take any damage on these mutalisks. And if you do want to save your depot, you have to come into a bad trade. And now he's got a full flock of muters, done significant economic damage, and it's in a great game state. Yeah, he's going to look to try and crush this bot force out on the map he's got the meta account to do it he's just waiting for upgrades to come in maybe a few lings to be mixed into the equation as well and then in gonna threaten the barracks here if he kills that uh 
turret there and takes over this location, Rush would be in a lot of trouble. So Rush is actually going to bring his entire army back to deal with this. this is exactly what Hero wants. Just delaying this army even further uh, and keeping the pressure off of his bases out on the map. Although a fire bat does make its way over here. Fire bat is going to deal some damage and pick off a drone. We do have a meet of those going to show up and only one drone loss. It's not the biggest deal in the world here for Hero. No, I mean, it, it does delay the gas timing at that expansion, but it's not the end of the world. It, it's just a nice, it's a very tiny victory for Rush to compensate for how poorly the game has gone thus far. Currently dead even on supplies, both players, which is indicative of a strong Zerg position. And eight minutes is a scary place to be because he could be at risk of dying just by moving out at this stage. Uh, like we were saying earlier, like a, a strong mutiling force could just clean up this buyer ball. And if he's not careful, that, exact, that might be exactly what transpires. And here is going to start whittling down uh, the, the bio a little bit by little and he's going to keep pressuring the production line to not only shave off marines but keep forcing these marines to stim and come back over and over again so he's just going to be as, as buying as much time as possible for this sort of like nine minute transition where he's going to start morphing lurkers at both his bases and then be super safe and be able to power up into a very strong late game if rush moves forward any further dude he's going to get crushed there's like an uh, a full another mutilus group with a bunch of lings just uh to the left of this position and if he moves out just a little bit further here's gonna run this over okay it's just four mutas i thought it was a little bit more than that but still that is a serious uh right. you know marine crushing force here that's ready to dive at a moment's notice so hero here he's got the the army together can he actually execute and overwhelm this force well rush is going to bring out his reinforcements so now this bio force he's waited long enough he's delayed long enough to where it's actually big enough where you can't really fight this with uh, Ling and Muta. You need to kite this and deal a little more damage, pick off straggling forces for a little bit before you actually fully engage, and that's what he's going to do. Yeah, I think it was a little bit of a mistake from Hero not to pressure the and be in between the Bible and the rally the rally point more to kind of not allow this uh, like coming together of the forces for Rush and to slow down the push a little bit. He was being a little bit passive with his Muta, just keeping track of the Bible. He is still playing a very stellar game, but a little bit of a missed opportunity there not to punish Rush when he tried to move out, but he is worried about Rush being extremely aggressive and catching him out of position, so can't totally fault him either. He's just trying to play a very straight-up game because he knows the good position that he's in. Dude. Rush is going to try and do a tank push and defile him out his turn. Yeah. It's crazy. I don't yeah. know why. Yeah, he's... I mean, he, he's feeling the desperation right now, and I think Hero's just going to wipe him out. There, there's almost no way this works. He's going to have Defiler easily in time here, and the tanks are even being delayed. They can't move out. Yep. Yeah, they're being delayed. Even just being delayed five seconds is a big deal right now. Because his window of making this work is already so tight that any second that Hero shaves off of that, he's going to be in a phenomenal position. Yeah, he's slowed this down enough, and we've got lurkers everywhere we're about to have defilers popping out here the consume is for sure on the way here that is so essential hero uh, bar him like m missing the upgrade or something like that he should be able to hold this no problem yeah consume will be finishing up just as this terran has started his siege but it will take some time for him to kill the sunkens and chew through the um the lurkers and what have you so it's not like he's just going to kill him right away so there will be enough time for consume to finish up just as he starts to break through there are three siege tanks and the the sunkens aren't staggered so he will get good splash damage on those uh, unable to kill the science vessel for the time being it has already used his irradiate though so no help on killing those lurkers does just decide to bust through with the marines so there's not a lot of lurkers away but here comes um hero from behind sniping off two of those three siege tanks which is going to really lay this push and there's a big flood of lurkers that he can still get up behind the mineral line and cause some economic pressure to hero but he's gonna lose the siege tanks he's not quite paying attention to that yeah the nidus does finish up so more lurkers are going to come through the mutas can come around and clear out the, uh, the the marines that are trying to run behind the mineral patches i don't see this defiler where is that i mean it should have popped out by now certainly um yeah, i think he made it at the third okay he made it at the third but it, i mean the nidus is right there i guess he's waiting uh on the other side of the nidus until he has the consume upgrade done so he can consume a throw down a dark swarm 
Uh, looks like we're going to rotate over here. Immediately pops through the Defiler. He's going to consume and throw down that Dark Storm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The Lurker actually died. Hold on a second. Can he actually find an angle here where he can maybe pick off that... Uh, the hatchery. The hatchery is just being targeted right now. Oh, he's got to get the, the spines. Is he actually going to kill this? Oh, he's going to kill it. Oh. And the drones might die as well now. Dude. Rush found the one hole. The tiny wow. little... Uh, that that the smallest tiniest little spot that hero was weak and he pushed through that one lurker that popped through with almost no hp i think clinched it there he just barely shot that down before the dark storm went down uh, went up and look at this hero is long distance mining all the way to that base it would have been a little easier had the base been, you know, up here at the top left where he's taking the, the hatchery now. But as it stands, he is in such a bad spot. He's going to have to long distance mine an incredibly far uh, base here. And this gas is just going to be denied for so long. I don't know if Hero can pull this back, man. I think he's just dead, maybe. Well, he certainly doesn't have the APM to send those gas drones to the through the Nidus and manually return them that way to get a little bit of gas income. <laughs> Only 600 gas a minute, more or less, maybe close to 650 with that long distance mining, but it's not looking good for him. Without that additional gas, there's going to be a real tough time producing the, the defilers, the lurkers, and the scourge that he needs to keep Rush at bay. And Rush knows that he's going to be keeping the pressure on as much as he can. And as Terran, you need to maintain map control or you're pretty much dead. So we'll basically be seeing that no matter what from Rush, meanwhile, taking this third base. So he's going to be attacking while defending and trying to put a little bit of pressure onto here and see if he can contain the threat and also going for a dropship gambit potentially into the main or that third base here. Yeah, the dropship gambit is where things just get so hard for the Zerg player. You're so strapped on gas and units right now because you, you didn't just lose the gas mining, you also lost the hatchery as well. Your larva count is low. Looks like he's going to see the drops. Okay, this is big. Seeing okay. the drops is actually massive for Hero. Yeah. The fact that he knows that this is coming means that he might just be able to snipe this down. He might be able to get in uh, in ahead of this, and that could actually swing this game. Oh, and he's running into Lurkers here as well. That's, uh, that's huge for Hero, and he might get a great Plague down? Dude, massive Plague Ooh. here. A hero might bring this back. Dude, this is crazy. Well, he's turning Rush into a kebab with all this chili sauce he's dousing him in. Rush needs to be careful. I mean, this is like pretty much most of his army, and he's just getting it drenched in this red goo. Okay, Ultra going to come up. Um, he's confident okay. enough to try and go for Ultra here. I thought it was, was going to be that uh, Hydralis Defiler play, but cool. here comes the drops. Well, Hydra, Hydra's make more sense with how delayed his gas was, but with the fourth gas coming online, I guess he can support it still, but there will be a little bit of window where he's not producing ultras, and with this triple dropship play, oh, look at the Scourge, he's going to be catching potentially two of these for free, and oh, this is really rough for Rush, he will get a few of these marines in, but the Lings will just easily clean this up, Rush is not going to be happy with this too, and look at this, even losing a lot of his forces and forced to reposition over and over again out here in the, the mid center of this uh, uh, high ground plateau here, so, ah, oh, this is just rough for uh, Rush. I just don't think there's any play left for him in this game going forward. Like, Hero has pretty much got all the tools that he needs going. And he, I don't, he's not even mining three on gas at his third is Rush. He's really behind on gas. And he's not, he's, he's forgot to put two SCVs on his third gas. Dude, a Rush, he thought, he, he really thought that he could get in there with those drops. And even if he didn't get any damage with the drops, he's like, all right, I'm going to control my Marines out here on the field and get some damage with those you know, pick off a defiler or something you know uh push through a lurker line while you're busy dealing with that drop in your main base but heroes everywhere man he handled uh, the attack in the main and he uh, managed to you know keep everything alive here out at the front he got some good trades with the defilers and the lings um during all of that craziness and now rush is going to try to push over here towards the fourth this is a very important location we have so many hatcheries over here and the gas has just come up there's still a few marines here lynx cannot clean this he needs to bring uh, more down here he needs to bring a defiler uh with some uh, you know lurkers or something i guess lynx are actually going to clear it because he was targeting down all of those uh gas drones but dude that was really really close to a break there rush gets forced back another drop gonna come in here 
Yeah, um, but Scourge are ready. Dude, he can't do it. He can't get in here. He's going to be denied. Hero's bringing this one back in a huge way. He's going to have a huge Ultralisk transition here coming up. And there it is. The third gas finally getting mined for Rush. But it's a little bit too late here. Yeah, I mean, Hero's anti-drop play has been stellar this game. He's really showing a master class in how to play ZVT. He's going to catch one of those drop ships for free, leaving the low HP one there as well, so it's easier to clean up. I think there's another pair of Scourge coming. Yeah, he's going to maybe get this one as well. Wow, Hero's on fire today, saying, what are we seeing? Ooh, great oh. play. Oh, dude. Yeah, he's going to be able to take this, and as long as he holds this next attack, uh, there's some Lurkers over there. There's a Defiler over here. He can't make any progress. Rush is going to be rebuffed one more time. He hasn't been able to secure his fourth yet. He's looking to do that now, but I, I imagine we're going to see... Oh, okay, one Hydra coming out, but there's the one Muta. The one Muta here making its way to the front, going to pick off a couple of vessels. That is some sick good play here from Hero. And he's going to come oh, forward one more time. Another goes down. How, how many times can a player surprise you? I just I don't, I don't get this guy, honestly. Like, he's, he's a glitch in the Matrix. Like, he, say, and he's, he's got to be my favorite player, honestly. Yeah, Rush is, I mean, trying everything that he can to just make some progress here. But now Mass Ultra going to start to hit the field. And with these Ultras coming out, I mean, they're heading up to top right. I guess he thought that there was maybe a base up there, but uh, there's nothing up there for Rush. Rush is trying, putting everything on the line here, trying to break into one of these bases. And he's m maybe just barely going to break through here. Nope. Dark Swarm. L uh, Defiler pops through the Nidus. Tosses that down and pops back through. He will shut down this base in the bottom left, but I don't think it matters. There's huge Ultra Wave coming out now. And Rush is... I, I don't think he's going to be able to hold bottom right here with all these ultras counterattacking him constantly. Yeah, uh, Terran needs to expand when they're mined out. And right now, he's uh, being reduced to just one base worth of mining. So he needs to get this base in the bottom right set up uh, pretty much now, yesterday, if anything. And, and, and I don't think he's going to have the production needed to keep uh, here at bay. The one thing he's got going for him is that the ultra speed hasn't kicked in yet. So he will have a little bit of a you know, control potential of just you know keeping them away from his bio. Because when the ultras have speed, you can't really retreat from them oh, anymore. Plague. Like, plague. Oh, plague. Plague. <laughs> Wow, saying the amount of plagues we've seen in this game that have just been pure money is insane. Like, I, I think like most players should like watch this game to like learn some real solid ZBT. Yeah, this is a great game to learn from here. Of course, doing everything that heroes doing is uh, a tall order. This man is out of control right now. Um, putting you know most Zerg players to shame with his control and and decision making, but. He's going to hold on to this base one more time. Just having the correct units in the right place at the right time. Fantastic. Fantastic stuff from him. Shutting down this base down here. I think it might be the final straw. Rush on one base mining here. As his gases start to run out as well. This uh, vessel count is going to get reduced for a final time. Ultras hitting from both sides as the Marines get cleaned up. GG is typed out. And Rush gets eliminated. Hero on a spree. Just two more Protoss players stand between him and that 2 million won prize. Well, Hero making us all look a little bit silly for ever doubting him as one of the best players of all time. Dude, this guy crushing in this week of KCM. And now it's up to best to shut him down and give... Uh, Protoss a chance to win this week for Snow still in that back pocket action. Another excellent Zerg player in the roster here. It's just all Protoss versus Zerg for the rest of this week, but only Hero has the opportunity to get the all kill. Yeah, I'm all about it though. I've been working on my PVZ lately. It's my weakest matchup and I do need to brush it up and it's something I play the least, so I'm really happy to, to study some great games, and these are probably some of the best games we could to try and learn from. So I recommend anyone out there to really try and dial in on what these players are doing and the little idiosyncrasies that they might be using to get one over their opponent here. Yeah, absolute cutting edge gameplay from these guys. Uh, they're going to be pulling out the absolute latest strategies and uh, delving into the meta. 
deeper than uh, basically anybody else. First, I mean, best throwing down a forge here. What do you think on Dark Origin Forge Fast Expand? I mean, I'm not too keen on it, but I do think it suits best play style a little bit more. Mm. So I'm happy to see him do it because I think it does suit him more. It does kind of limit his range of play. But, uh, oh, look at this little uh, obfuscation here. We see the Overlord inside the main base going cross map. That's to force the Protoss. Oh, look at that spot! Best checks it, but Hero knows better and put his drone just a little bit left, hugging that water line more so that he wouldn't see it and obfuscates the drone so he does get this hatchery down. See, he hides the second Overlord so Best doesn't know that it's overpool. He thinks it might still be nine pool, so he's forced to check the main base, but he did try and check behind the minerals for that drone and didn't see it. Really tight mind games from both players here. yeah very nice very very nice for hero he's going to be able to get that base uh, in the preferred location here being forced over to the the third uh for your natural is it's just a pain in the butt it's not a a massive loss if uh hero has to throw that down over there if best actually spots that but you know getting the better end of that trade it's it's a great mental and uh you know small advantage here in a, in a real sense for hero so he's going to be able to get into his game best of course throwing down the nexus after forge so he has a great economy behind this but uh, here we'll just be able to pump pure drone from here just four links were produced that's uh, almost the bare minimum you know if there is a pylon that gets thrown down to block your third there's no other place to take the third really on this map so um you have to have those four lings at least to kill the pylon if he decides to do that although if he'd placed down the pylon at that time it would have significantly delayed his gateway so mm. best did not want to delay his tech that significantly for the compensation of delaying the third so i think hero kind of knew that in the back of his mind with his overlord seeing everything in the natural so i was very confident that he would get that third down yeah for sure but i mean if he if uh, he saw only two lings and you throw oh, yeah, down that yeah. if you throw down that pylon you know that he's it, like the pylon's gonna finish <laughs> you have to build that hatchery so you probably have to build it like off center maybe at that third or you know put it at like over here over in the center right which yeah. would be terrible for his uh his base layout and, and defense wow. later on well, I would just place it off center and then yeah. play four hatch Hydra and delay my guess, I think, in that yeah. situation. Yeah, that that that's probably how you'd have to play, but that and then that would be best kind of securing or taking uh taking control of the game a little bit more and, and playing you right. know, knowing exactly how his opponent has to play and forcing him into that position. Um, which is never how you want to play as Zerg. You don't want to be controlled. You wanna have uh, options available to you and uh, so the the opponent doesn't know exactly what you're going for, you can kind of hide mm -hmm. things from them and stuff. Anyway, well, you, go on. I was say, usually it's the other way around, right? Usually it's the Protoss player with the limited information and being railroaded into a very rigid right. play in terms of their range. So when you can flip the script on the Zerg like that, it is very rewarding and can be devastating for the Zerg to have to navigate. Mm -hmm. Well, here we're going to have our best getting into his Stargate play and a Hydra Den already done for hero in the main now he's gonna force the lings to come over here towards the third and at that moment he's gonna send the the probe into the main and try to figure out what's actually going on here and there's not too much the hero can do about that because he has to bring these links to bear in order to deal with this and yeah the probe is gonna get in he sees the hydra den this is perfectly done by best just absolute perfection his execution of this play here the the zealot and the probe doing their job doesn't matter if they die now doesn't matter if they get pro uh, any drone kills but he's gonna go for it anyway he gets one. Oh, wow that's a big deal i mean Wow. I mean, we did see a little ring around the rosy there initially to like protect these drones, but coming back in for that drone snipe is huge. Not only delaying the mining time, but also getting a drone snipe is huge at this stage in the game. It's really going to limit the, the power behind uh, any kind of transition out of this. If he wants to commit to this, he has to kind of like put all his eggs in one basket and best knows that he's going to go up to four cannons right away, be super safe. And that's going to probably trigger Hero to not even want to pull the trigger on this at all. And instead just going to go for a normal macro play, which is going to suit best just fine really good damage on this first overlord too that overlord's the closest one to the natural which means that you know if he sweeps in with a couple of corsairs a little later he could probably snipe that and then just defend with dt if necessary but he's flying through the main and natural 
and he sees that there are uh, hatcheries being added, so he knows that it's not going to be all in Hydra. He is going to cancel, looks like, one of the cannons. He's just on three, which is a little bit dangerous. Three is bare minimum, absolute bare minimum, but right. Bess is walking a fine line right now and, uh, you know, checking to make sure that more Hydras aren't coming. He's got to keep tabs on that to make sure that another swell of Hydra doesn't come and just end his game here. He has to have enough... Make sure that he has enough uh, cannons to defend that if it does occur. Oh, but three cannons basically just stops you dying to like the the fake Hydra bust, mm, yeah. like actually having enough weight to it to do some damage as well. So it kind of just like makes sure you don't just die straight up to even just like a very tiny amount of Hydras. So it is a very safe, uh, a safe in the most minimalistic state. But he did have four cannons initially, but he plays the way I advise whenever I'm coaching a, a Protoss player in PVZ. Uh, if you're not sure, it's better to just start the cannon than cancel at 99 you know what i mean mm. kind of hedge your bets a little bit yeah yeah for sure and, and he did cancel the cannon um he yeah he's got a i was just trying to say he needs to stay active with this course there to make sure that there's not more hydras coming because right, they can right. handle what is here right now but they can't handle anymore uh if more hydras suddenly show up with three cannons you can just die so he is going to clear that overlord now finally and he forces hero back hero's been droning up behind this so he is going to uh, have an economy here that is going to be formidable but he doesn't have a spire which could become a problem here uh, as this game progresses he's gonna have to defend against the zealot timing and keep his overlords alive which could be a little tough there's the spire coming up now but it's nowhere near complete he has got three gases coming online, which makes me think he will be doing the same kind of style of getting mm. into these mutalisks to deal with the Templar. He did kind of delay mining the gas, though, so it does seem like he's aware of the game state. He knows he's a little bit behind the economic curve because of all this harassment that Best has been throwing at him, like we see here. So he is, it took him a little bit longer than he'd like to to get up to the six hatchery production. So he delayed his gas mining just a tiny bit to squeeze out a few extra drones, get at least one per patch is the, the bare minimum you want. And then once you've got like two control groups of hydrogen, you can go back into droning a little bit more. Mm, so... With the number of units he's got out right now, I think he can start to drone up once again. He's going to approach that like 45 count right around there right, before taking right. a third base. Our Dark Archon coming up. Okay, B Bess is very aware, as was Bisu, that there's a potential with the third gas coming up to go into a middle switch, but no. Lurker. It's going to be the choice here. I like it on this map. You know, the, the play that we saw um from him previously on on citadel um mm. i mean that play is strong but on this map i don't favor it as much because when we attack in um with the mutas we kill off all the templar and then we still have to cross cross these bridges which is a really big right. pain with all the hydras but if we go with lurker instead we can control the middle of the map and then the onus is on protoss to cross the bridges which is uh, a much better position to play from i think as hero absolutely and with these bridges and the left side choke it is much easier to contain the threat of the protoss player and navigate this like mid game phase a bit more comfortably as zerg and with this low to high ground transition from the third base location it can be so annoying to have to deal with like uh, the small lurker contains there but usually you actually won't see the zerg set up there you'll actually see the zerg set up much further out in the open uh, near the bottom of this sort of fourth base location they want to like kind of contain in these like wide to open choke areas uh, a little bit ironically but it's just so they don't get stormed to death in these tight narrow corridors so you'll usually see zerg set up outside these three bridges and then as a secondary contain they might set up a, a, outside this fourth base as well so hero here is going to make a lot of lurkers and while you're doing this you're actually droning up pretty hard you're using all of your gas uh, as it comes in to make these lurkers and set up this big contain and then the rest is all the minerals can go into those drones uh, that's going to allow you to quickly saturate that fourth base while having still a strong army uh, that's kind of building up over time and getting prepared for this uh this move across that Bess is going to try to do well these lurkers are not set up very nicely I, I think this was a big mistake by hero you needed to have this set up a little bit better um, running in like that and just burrowing immediately in kind of a, a long line allows him to get stormed down pretty uh, brutally here. And Best now taking control of that left side. He's going to back up as Hero starts to push forward across these bridges. But 
Hopefully Hero can move quickly back over to that left side and set up a contain. Otherwise, you know, we might see best, you know, quickly and easily grab a fourth base without too much contention from Hero. Yeah, I mean, right now, though, the supplies does kind of suggest that if Hero was able to get a good engagement, he would be able to trade well. The thing is that best might not let that happen, right? He might just sit on this high ground area and take his fourth base and try and get into a powerful macro game himself. I think Hero is anticipating all this, though. The way he's setting up, I kind of like Hero's position a lot i feel like he's he's anticipating the game going the way it is going to go and he's already like he's not counting his eggs play hatch he's already setting up for the next phase of the game he understands full well that he can't like force any interactions here he's just going to play really chill and passive just control the center of the board and force best to come to him yeah the, the control of the center of the map uh here on dark origin is paramount you must keep control of this area uh, as a Zerg player, otherwise the Protoss can storm you from the low ground onto your fourth base, and he's gonna come forward here. Storm gonna follow up the Maelstrom, kills off a lot of Hydras here. Uh, but that, you know, that's a fairly big commitment, making that uh, Dark Archon. You do need to get more than just one Maelstrom on a few Hydras to make that worth it. Yeah, I mean... <sighs> Uh, best is slightly coming out ahead in supply now he's getting his armor upgrades i imagine plus two armor is going to be finishing up shortly i think things will be looking good for best it's just that he's being delayed so much and hero is getting stronger and stronger in his production as time goes on he's going to be going up to like 10 hatchery production defilers are on the way and once plagues start chaining the clock's going to be on best to make things happen that's why we see best skirmishing so much right now he's aware that he's on the clock right now he's, he's setting up this fourth base but he also needs to keep whittling down the zerg army with these skirmishes all the zerg will just be an uncontainable threat well the fourth base is going to come up here pretty darn quick for best um what i'm worried about from him is right when the defiler comes out we could see hero cross these bridges there's not really anything on the other side of the the bridge right now and right. if hero suddenly you know has the the defiler here drops the dark swarms over on this side and then crosses the bridges and drops dark swarm in between the rally and the third then best could find himself in a really awkward position he's gonna try and break out here once again but i think he just lost the observer in that maelstrom or in that uh, in that fight there um not the ability but uh, just a metaphorical maelstrom of a fight <laughs> conceptual, um, maelstrom. conceptual maelstrom there uh, so he can't actually break through and the lurker here on the low ground are actually going to deal some damage you don't often Ooh. see this from the from the, the the zerg taking advantage like this but uh, it's definitely uh, I, kind of um it's nice to see because that's what uh, protoss are always doing is dropping the storms up on the high ground killing right. off the drones yeah, you usually don't see that from Zergs. It's nice to see some tactical lurker plays. Uh, sometimes you can go for like little uh, lurker drops where you like drop like two lurkers at each base. But look at this. Best pushing out in a strong way, trying to take the sub southern threshold of this force um, in an isolated fashion so that Hero, if he wants to, has to uh, un unburrow and come to him. And that's not favorable for the Zerg to reposition your lurkers like that. So now we see the wall of Zerg try and crash into Best head on. But there's enough sellouts on the eastern flank to cover the retreat now. So you won't hopefully lose too much of this infantry force. He will consolidate the majority of its forces to keep fighting back with some skirmishes more and more trying to get these storms online so that he can whittle down the zerg but hero's done a great job of keeping all of his units spread so he's not losing too many clumps of units at time only getting like say five or six hydras caught in a storm at any given time so everything so far going hero's way i think that he's also done enough damage at this fourth base and denied mining for long enough that he's going to be in a very formidable position going forward here soon Defiler is about to pop out here if it hasn't hit the field already. We're past 15 minutes. Round 14 is like the earliest Defiler you can really get in this matchup. Um, but I think we're about to see that hit the field here. More lurkers popping out. He's trying to make a, a move towards the north. Sensing that there might be a few, two, uh, a little bit too less uh, lurkers up here. And hey, man, he might actually break through. That was a great maelstrom. Hitting a couple yeah. of lurkers that were unburrowed and a bunch of hydras. He clears that out really, really well. And he's carved himself a little bit of a space here at the bottom of this cliff. But if he gets surrounded now, he could lose the entirety of his army. Um, the dragoons. Oh, yeah, there's the defiler. 
does consume, but actually the Ling dies before it gets consumed. So he can't throw down any abilities. Needs to fall back and actually get another uh, consume here. He will drop a Dark Swarm on these uh, Lurkers and holds the position. But Bess has, you know, he's made some space here. He's, he's given himself a little bit of a window to actually move around this army and not just be completely contained by the Dark Swarm. He's weakened the pawn structure of Hero, and now he's starting to isolate certain key areas to really overall, like, take control of the center away from Hero. And now Best, looking like he's starting to get some control in this game. The supplies do, like, kind of suggest that Hero's got some life in this game, but having conquered most of the center of the board, it does give a lot of breathing room to Best. He just needs to keep the unit production going. Look at the Swarm of Zerg, though, coming in from these rally points. If he hasn't got enough Storm remaining in his arsenal, he won't be able to keep fighting fighting Hero off though, and Hero might be able to regain control of that sensor, which is going to be so crucial going forward in this game. Dude, my eyes just about popped out of my head when I saw those seven lurkers just run up into that <laughs> force. I, like, dude, he's out of, you know, he's out of rallies, he doesn't have anything coming up here, but then lurkers come out of nowhere and hold this right as the Templar run out. Perfect timing there from Hero. He can stack up the lurkers really tight and take that fight. More Templar here, though, now. He actually needs to spread out. Plague. Plague, plague, plague. Oh. Big plague on this army. Oh. Huge plague. Wow, the unit's, like, glitching out. They Even they are in shock at how good that plague was. And now with a nice little tactical surround, going to be cleaning up the majority of those plague units, shuffling forward. We need to be careful, though, not to leave these uh, lurkers clumped. This is the problem with Zerg. As you reposition your lurkers, usually they'll end up clumped up, and they just end up stormed. So what the Pearls player will usually do is try and force repositions from the Zerg to get better value out of their storm. Storms. And right now, though, it doesn't really matter. It comes down to a numbers game, and Hero's slightly getting the better of best. And with these tactical plays, going to be forcing him back and maintaining some kind of positional advantage to levy against him. If he does keep trying to come out into the center board, it does allow Hero wider arcs of engagement, and it does favor the Zerg. And with all the five of these bases operational, it's going to be a, a matter of time before Best needs to secure this base in the bottom left to kind of guarantee a game winning state. And Hero's probably not going to allow that to transpire. Yeah, Best is still okay here. He's got two bases mining, and on two bases mining, Protoss can fight for a very, very long time. He still has some... Actually, his mineral smoothing has been pretty excellent this game. He still has some minerals in the main and natural, which I'm a little bit surprised about, but I guess he took those, you know, the third and fourth base so quickly this game uh, that he's able to, to make that happen, and so he's going to have a great economy here still, and a, a, an opportunity to maybe leverage that economy to get another base in the bottom left. But I, I think killing Hero right now is kind of off the table at this point. He's, he's going to have to, like, wither him down, wear him down in the late game by taking this base. Uh, if anything. Well, it's going to be a, an opening to the main base of the Zerg. Hero is aware of it. That's why we see these units like kind of positioning at the top of the ramp here. I have to say, with the control of the center, it's allowed the Hero to completely harass this fourth over and over again with his little tactical lurker positioning and denying mining. That's huge. Like It slows down the powerhouse of Best so much. It kind of reduces him back down to only one mineral base uh, effective mining, and that's not going to be enough. Natural now going to be mined out. He did do a big transfer from the main base to the the fourth earlier which is why he's like got the, the minerals moving that he has got but look at these trades like even though he's getting such great storms look at the supplies like here it's the, the macro of hero is just so devastating and he's just chaining plagues over and over again on the big death ball of best and just takes the wind out of his sails and forces him to stay passive and that suits best just uh, suits our hero just fine because best hasn't got this bottom left base up and running yet yeah all red units here but it's time to start going like mass Archon anyway. We gotta start pumping out tons of Templar. Maybe even go into Reaver at this point as well. Uh, because we are gonna go late if Best manages to snag the space in the bottom left. He is gonna take this into a massive late game and it'll be up to Hero to try and break that base. He hasn't sent a probe down there uh, just yet, which I'm a little bit surprised about, but 
It's just about time to get a probe in that location to start throwing down cannons on that high ground. Yeah, I think one mistake that I think Kira's made is that he's only chaining plagues on this force at the, the bottom. I think he should have been trying to be a little bit more opportunistic and chaining some plagues on the, the rally point of Best mm. as well, because there's a lot of clumped units there, and he could have gotten some free plagues off, and he hasn't done that. So now we see this rally point actually in full strength and at full HP, able to come out and make some plays here. But somehow Hero with the macro, able to keep everything pushed back, and he has still got this lurker being annoying at the fourth base as well, I think. Time to make like six Archons here, man. That's so many Templar. But we hardly even need this many storms right now. And we're probably not going to have the opportunity to even cast them all uh, in a real fight. He's going to start to come forward here, making some Archons, making some uh, more Templar, pushing forward. He was pushed back from the bottom left. And maybe Hero can try to take that base now. But... He's moving out on the map with some units from the rally, trying to get a position here at the front. Maybe force some defensive uh, moves here from Hero. Force him to run into storms here li just like this. Could actually trade pretty darn well. Oh, the Observer was not with that army. It wasn't over top of the Archons there so that he could actually clear those Lurkers. Now it's over in the right position. Getting up here on the high ground, the Archons are going to fight really, really nicely. The Storms are fantastic, but Hero is eventually going to trade out this army and finish it off. Yeah, but the supplies are starting to favor best more and more. So if he can just keep like unloading onto the center of the map and preventing heroes setting up those kind of like soft contained positions mm -hmm. outside the, of the fourth base choke and this bridge area, that will allow him to get some good trades finally. And he is getting some, uh, he, is, he has got a big enough death ball where he can just keep going and just like keep whittling down hero over and over again. Now that the, the ball is big enough and we've got center control, now best can really put the hurt on hero and keep forcing him back over and over again. And he won't get the kind of easy plagues that he needs anymore to, to get the effective trades. You need pl uh, plague to, to trade effectively with a fully upgraded Protoss army with Lynx. That's why we see no Lynx being fielded right now, because without good plagues on this army, there's no point even bringing out too many Lynx. So you can see a few Lynx here and there, but you won't see like a big flood of Lynx unless he's getting chain plagues. Look at this. Best is going to get up onto this base. Hero, his fourth, wow. might actually be picked off here. Lurker's going to run right up wow. on top of this. Get a pretty good burrow here. There's not going to be a storm to, to kill this, but the Zealots are fighting just straight up against the Lurkers and killing them off. Another great round of storms here. And dude, is he actually going to be able to do it? He's going to make a bunch more Archons, and the Archons are not going to be killed. He's going to be able to keep these Archons alive, and they're going to fight these Lings incredibly well. Okay, he does surround and probably try to kill these, target them down as quickly as possible. The Archons live. No way. The Archons still alive here. He does pick off two of them, but one more going to send up towards the top right. There's only a few links here. This is it, man. Best is going to get in here. Oh, this is crazy. He almost got on top of those Archons before they finished morphing and didn't quite get it. And now he's got a tactical advantage on top of this ramp. He's not going to be able to trade well against these Zealots and Archon anymore. He does catch this other Archon that's out in the map. Maybe he could get some of these High Templars too, but he will get this hatchery in the top right critically. And Hero is going to be devastated by that. He's, he's mined out now. It's 24 minutes into the game. So he does mine out a lot slower than Protoss due to the saturation. But at this point in the game, you are now starting to really heavily depend on these like Frontier bases and with them being sniped like this like Bess is going to be in a great position it's almost like game ending at this point yeah he I mean he's got to get over there and take a uh, center right he's not mining anywhere else he's got 30 minerals left fighting with just a few hydras and lings he can't actually believe it at this point I think he's in disbelief Crazy. as Bess pushes forward G G wow, wow. Best the gorilla man. It's just, just it's just too much for even hero. Like as good as hero is, like just King Kong himself is just like beating his chest and wants to come out strong and prevent his pearls brethren from being annihilated by the absolute powerhouse of hero. Finally slaying him and uh, crazy best is not known for his pvz so to see him take down hero like that that's style man like really stellar game from him and hero had a great game state maintained for a very long time i have a theory about these poppers man i think that they pop the popper every time uh an all kill is denied it's like the increase of the the all kill prize um popper that's that's my new theory here guys as to why we're popping those but
The, I mean, with Hero going down, there's no chance of an all kill anymore. So that prize will continue to uh, gather strength, will continue to grow until someone claims that. It'll have to be maybe next week uh, that that ends up coming out. But, uh, dude, Hero was looking fantastic this week. It seemed like no one could stop him, but best. Mm. Even one upping hero, kind of crazy. Maybe he, maybe he should have actually gone for that uh, uh, style with the uh, the mutas again. Actually, <laughs> uh, well, I think lurker. he was trying to mm. circumnavigate the the fact that Best was mind ga uh, so meta gaming him with the preemptive maelstrom mm. and stuff. Right. So he kind of knows that Best has got his number and has that all mapped out anyway. So he was trying to skirt around that game plan a little bit. He yeah. just have great center control and did deny mining on the fourth base with that lurker on the low ground for so long. It's just that Best seems to, even though it's not his strongest matchup, he does seem to be able to navigate these weird game states. And he's one of the best at coming back in these situations, I find. We've seen him do it before where it seemed like he was completely destroyed and somehow just comes out and explodes onto the map and regains control and just annihilates the Zerg all at once. I, I really think that it was the the speed of the fourth base that kind of ruined the game plan here for Hero that kind of uh, gave Best the momentum that he needed. If he would have set up that contain on the left-hand side uh, a little bit faster, a little bit more efficiently, right? He dropped three Lurkers uh, to two Storms uh, right off the bat over there on that left side. If he had been able to set those up a little bit more spread out, and taken a fight there and slowed that fourth base down a bit, the mineral smoothing wouldn't have been nearly as nice for best, and he would have had, you know, some harder time, a harder time macroing out all those units to break through. Anyway, guys, we could theory craft all day long about <laughs> what could have been, but we're gonna jump into best versus action here. It's coming up next. Okay, Troy is going to be possibly our final map here with best up in the bottom right down in the bottom right and up in the top right it's action um a little bit of news here guys since this is the last potentially the last game of this week of kcm i wanted to let you guys know that Next week, I'm going to Korea. I'm going to watch the round of four. I bought the tickets. Ooh. I'm ready to go. Um, I've got the plane. I've got the plane ticket. You know, it's only $10 to go and watch the ASL. What? Yeah. You kidding me? No, that's for normal seats. $10, guys. It's $6. Deal of a lifetime. For the cheap seats. $10 for the good seats. So, of course, I got the, got the good seats. I'm going to be in front row. Get a watch. Uh, see if I'm uh, on the the uh, the stream there, or the uh, <laughs> the later taste doses video. Maybe I'll have a nice cheerful uh, for the for this for the chat <clears throat> for the uh, for the channel. Hey, ten I'm really excited. For, yeah, ten buckaroos for front row seats at the ASL. That's the deal of a century, man. Whoa, and I bet you're super stoked for that, man. I'm envious. Like. <sighs> You, you gotta write some funny ish on a sign i'll tell you what mm, it's a it's like a life goal of mine i've always wanted to to go and see it live so <laughs> the opportunity is there i'm very close to korea it's like uh 250 bucks or something to to fly mm. so uh, it's only an hour and a half flight so i mean it's, <sighs> it's a really good situation i'm just gonna go for a couple of days um and uh see both of the round of four matches and then head back there's so many creative ideas you could do for a sign but you could do a shout out to kcm and be like you could like find out how to write something to the effect of like you know like english kcm casters or something like on your sign in korean so like you know do a little mm. shout out to kcm and what we're about kind of thing Maybe. We'll see what I end up coming up with, but uh, I'll probably do a bit of streaming uh, of my experience. I'll definitely make a video for Patreon as well. Um, it's going to be fun, guys. It'll be really, really fun. I'm super, super excited exciting. about it. Yeah, but, man. Um, I'm happy to. This has been a fantastic week of KCM, guys. I'm really stoked to see what happens here as well. We've got Best throwing down a cannon. He starts a second cannon, but he stops it. And action is going to take... 
another natural. I think this is the only way to play Zerg on this map is to take another natural. Yeah, this is how Lava would probably play on this map, and you you can't fault it. It's it's just it's a very strong standard way of playing it, and you kind of are allowing yourself a more passive approach to the game. You're not forcing yourself to make any plays. You can just go into a very turtle Zerg style and take four bases if you so choose. So it does allow you a very powerful uh, macro orientated, and Action is a very macro orientated player. Yeah, he is going to get some lings out here to defend this first zealot that might be coming, but... Oh my gosh, that's actually a lot of lings, and this is going to be spotted by Best. He's going to do some sort of run by here. The the top of that gas, you can actually get by with the lings, so... Um, we might be able to get into the main base through this position. Yeah, I mean, he's having to pull probes. You need at least five probes here, and maybe even yeah, eight. Yeah, he's getting in. <laughs> yeah, he needs a lot of probes to block this, and he can trade well with the probes as well. The, the cannon does cover the hex angle, so if he does probe drill on this this, this axis here, he can deny the, the links getting in, but he can't necessarily deny um, the, the Nexus going down if there wasn't a Zealot coming out. So it's a little bit of a weird situation here. Bess has lost a lot of mining time at the very least, and now he can get us around on this Zealot. Just Okay, well, doesn't quite get this round, but now we'll get the final run into the main base that he was looking for. And now a lot of pressure can be uh, levied against uh, Best. And Action is just on fire today with these little tactical decisions. Yeah, I, I do this all the time, actually, on this map. <laughs> this is, like, my main go-to. <laughs> Build a bunch of links and just run by because it's really hard to, to wall in. You need another pylon, actually, above the gas in order to stop that from going down. So. Right. Uh, it seems like Best not aware of that, but he's learned his lesson now. Definitely won't make that same mistake in the ASL if it comes to it. Yeah, I mean, I, I hope so. I mean, you'd hope that it, it, all these players learn from their mistakes, but we do see some players like fall into their old habits, and it can't be helped. I think like they play so much, they kind of you know kind of fall into those grooves and the, the, the mindset, and it just can't be broken because they're, they're so dedicated to the game because of their careers and streaming and the tournaments and stuff and what have you. They can't re afford to take breaks to refresh themselves. Well, he's gonna set up a little wall in here. I kind of like this. Uh, positioning with the Cybernetic score. Uh, but we're still going to see more probes go down almost 100% as speed finishes up. The gas mining probes are going to be so <laughs> vulnerable here. And this just slowing down the gas at all is going to really hurt the um, Corsair timing. And that in turn will stop you know, best from scouting and figuring out what's actually going on until maybe it's too late. Yeah, I mean, right now the Protoss needs every drip of gas they can get. So having your gas being reduced from 300 gas a minute to like a bit of an obscure, like 200, 250 gas a minute because of the denied mining and a pro being sniped here and there. It's, it's crazy value that Action's got. And the fact that he's got the APM, the 400 APM to multitask and switching back and forth between doing his build order and doing this harassment at the same time, it's crazy amount of value. He's even forced a cannon in the main base and he's going to get a pro before the lings get shut down by the cannon it's insane the amount of value those lings have gone yeah that was really smart by action waiting until the cannon was like just finishing to run in with the lings to get the last probe kill um forcing the cannon to finish you know not able to actually cancel that oh it's going double stargate i actually like this because i was thinking right as i was watching this game like how it was unfolding here that this would be a great yeah. position for an ogre zerg play but um right. yeah he, he's not gonna go for that uh there's no second gas here uh i think action is just gonna get into a huge amount of hatcheries and a bunch of sunkins and that'll actually favor him if he goes for a uh, double stargate there's not gonna be a lot of options for best here yeah, he's going to do what I said. He's going to play Lava Star. He's just going to take four bases, turtle up, and just like laugh at Best because Best is going to struggle to come out onto the map and challenge him. And he doesn't need to kill Best. He's done enough damage to Best already to slow him down. He's feeling very comfortable in this game. Yeah, he is. He's going to take his fourth base already seven minutes in. This is a crazy quick fourth base, and there's really not much that Best can do about it. He's going to lose his Zalots out on the map. He might be able to run into the natural here. Um, there's no lings right now over the, in that area to, to deal with that. But even if he gets a couple of drone kills, it's not going to be the, the end of the world here for action. He's able to drone up so much and get so many hatcheries out right now. Um, 
As long as he doesn't lose too many overloads to this double Corsair play, he should be fine. Yeah, I mean, it's good that Best is attempting to do this, though. Like, this is the kind of thing that he does need to do to squeeze some kind of uh, compensation for his disastrous game state. Unfortunately, he is kind of putting himself a little bit more behind. If, if they are slightly unsuccessful attacks, it does make his, his moves out all the more weaker, but he kind of is forced to do it because he's kind of like eventually going to have to just build up to a big enough Corsair fleet that he can kind of go for a bit of a gamble play, try and kill enough of the overlords to uh, prevent the production of um, action running wild. He knows how strong of a macro player action is. If he gets any further ahead, he's going to be in a nightmare situation. Well, action is actually going to get a bit out of control here because he didn't... He, he wasn't able to force him to, to build a bunch of sunken colonies here. Usually when you go for this uh, additional natural, you're going to put buildings up in the front and build a bunch of sunken colonies behind so that you can deal with whatever push is going to come out of best. But because he lost those early zealots, his push timing is so late, we can skip all those extra buildings. We can just build hydras and drones and uh, get away right. with a lot here. He's going to pump up so many drones that... Best is going to be light years behind by the time he finally decides to move out. We only need like two control groups of hydras, and then you can just drone behind that. You need like oh yeah, like one two control to two groups of hydras gives you that sort of comfort to be like yeah, I'm not going to die to any like eight nine minute like zealot timing that you can throw at me, and I can just drone safely behind that. And with the fourth base as well, like it's it's going to be insane just how much of an advantage he's going to secure soon if he does remain unchecked like this. Yeah, he's got. Uh, higher supply right now than best even this is kind of crazy um, yeah. best had to make extra cannons because of the hydras being out like you can't hope to hold on with just you know two cannons or something um if you don't build enough cannons here you can't just die right the the slow zealots mm -hmm. are not going to save you and we're so far away from storm because of this double stargate um Dude, this is this is really bad. Best hasn't killed any overlords that I've seen so far. No, no, no I, don't, I think maybe one or two, but yeah, not the kind of compensation you'd want for such a big gas dump. And he he already had his gas like you know siphoned off a little bit with that ling harass in the main base. Remember, so he's really far behind the uh, the tech curve of the game because of how much gas has been lost to the the, the harassment and now also dumped into this so far useless tech. Well, he's going to make a move now. He's going to dive on top of these overlords, but the Zealots, they're dying, and the Corsairs are not getting the kills that they need. Now they're coming back in. He needs to kill all of these overlords to, to even even like, make this an even trade. Um, and he kills most of them, but, I mean, we just lost, like, 10 Zealots. 10 Zealots yeah, for, like, four overlords. That's crazy. Yeah, the only way that would be worth it is if, say, we had a DT coming in behind that and we killed all the overlords and then we get some economic damage as well to compensate, then maybe we're talking. He's instead going to take this little island base here with the shuttle, which is it, it's, it's a reasonable thing that he can resort to here, but he's still going to be really far behind the curve of this game and he's really lost in the ebb and flow and he's just playing catch up at this point and I do really worry for him. I, I, I agree with this play from Bess. Like, he has to do something here, right? Mm, and taking right. the island is at least going to give him a chance, maybe. Yeah. Um, if he just tries to push out here, he's going to die 100%. Now, he's going to try and fly in here with the shuttle. Sees that there is an army there. He will go for the storm. Big Ooh. storm there. Pretty darn good. But, uh, I mean, a few uh, Scourge are going to come and maybe pick off the shuttle. He's not paying attention. He loses oh. one Corsair. Going after the shuttle, he gets the one hit but keeps the shuttle alive. That is uh, by the skin of his teeth here, best keeping that in the game. Yeah, that was good close call there. It, uh, do you think that if he... I don't think he... It, I just thought for a second that what if Best like also tried to take this other island expansion in the bottom left as his fourth? Would that be like a viable play, do you think, here, given that he's not going to have any map control for quite some time? I think so. I think that might be the only thing he can do right now. Maybe he can uh, fly over and just drop a couple of zealots and kill the, the assimilators too at, at, at 6 o'clock. Right. If he's not right. watching exactly on the assimilators, maybe you can kill those because there's something down there watching but it's not seeing the assimilators a drop comes in he's gonna shut down this base 
Dude, action is on top of everything right now. He's not even gonna let him Crazy. mine here. He's got a drop in the uh, natural too, in the main as well. Wow. Hydra's coming in. Oh my god. Dude, action killing it right now. Everything's going down. <sighs> Best just getting ripped to pieces here. This is insane, saying. I'm. I'm this is crazy. Like, how, how well he's playing today is in, in, in... All the Zerg players have shown up. Like, Actions performing better than he has recently. Queen performed better than he has recently. And Hero showed up even more phenomenal than he, he does usually. Oh, look at his probe transfer. Oh, my gosh. Barely. Oh, he might lose this one as well. Oh. Best is just toying of us right now. With the, if he's, like, setting those back any moment later, he would have lost a lot more probes. He does lose this Nexus at this island base. And look at the flood of Hydras. This is looking like a scene from Starship Troopers where, like... Like this, like they're trying to defend Whiskey Outpost, just the onslaught of Arachnids just descending upon you. Dude, there's no way you're breaking out of this, man. Uh, Vess saying he can break these cuffs, but Action sitting in the front seat says you can't break those cuffs, man. This is this is game over. You're going to jail here, and uh, Vess is just gonna get shoved back. Losing his observers here as well. Kind of a nail in the final nail in the coffin there. A great storm in the middle of this army. And it will, you know, shove back action a little bit. But uh, he action can afford to, to drop back a little. He's got so much going for him right now. And there's almost no probes left over. Dude, how crazy is it that action got all of these drops off against a player who went double Stargate Corsair to open? Yeah. I, I, I don't know. Like I, I was kind of, I think going double Stargate was a was a. I, I like I like the meta idea of it, but it really has bit him bit him hard in this game. There's no way he can defend against this amount of hydras. He's completely outmatched by the, the macro of action here. He is still trading well, but it doesn't matter because like eventually you're just gonna get whittled down to a nub. You're only on two base production. The Zerg's on four. Even if the Zerg trades at a 37% efficiency, eventually he's gonna overcome you. GG. Damn, action. Winning out on Troy. I really feel like that's a Protoss favorite map, but some people may disagree. Best definitely disagrees there after watching action. Just take huge, huge liberties on the map in the top left-hand corner. Uh, and there wasn't really much Best could do about it. Uh, yeah, it does come down to that double Stargate, but... Action really playing that map like Larva would, as you said. And uh, bringing us into a final game here. This is so exciting, dude. We're going to get Action versus Snow that's coming right up. Set number eight Snow versus Action. We couldn't have asked for better here, Shum. It's been an amazing week of KCM. I think one of the best we've ever had. And guys, if you agree, blow this video up. Make sure everyone sees it. Hit the like button. Go down in the comments. Let us know which was your favorite game so that we can get this out to as many people as possible. Dude, everybody's got to see what amazing play there is in this absolutely fantastic tournament. Oh, yeah. Not, not only has the play been fantastic, but the tempo swings, the, the, the drama. You know what I mean? Oh, it's, it's been phenomenal saying that we couldn't have scripted a better week ourselves. No, absolutely not. Um, all these players pulling out their absolute A game during this ASL season. You know, some people have been hiding their builds. Um, but of course, if you get knocked out, no reason to hide your builds anymore. Time to pull out the very, very best that you can have, that, that you have to offer. And I think we've seen a little bit of that today. Absolutely, Sam. I, I think that now that players have been knocked out and... You know, they don't have any restrictions anymore. They don't need to worry about the obfuscation of their builds anymore. They can just absolute A-game it. And a lot of them are going to be cutting edge really sharp on top of their game due to just how much they've been practicing for that ASL. So everyone's like razor sharp right now. Talking about A-game and being razor sharp here, Snow is so finely tuned right now this dude is crazy crazy look at this micro Whoa. on the pro are you oh, kidding wow. me Whoa. holy crap dude Whoa. snow is absolutely nuts right that now yeah yeah he was just just slicing through that drone there and i mean razor sharp is an understatement snow is crazy crazy strong and he's gonna open gateway after nexus <laughs> after yeah. seeing the 12 hatch <laughs> this guy 
What in God's name is going on right now? He's gonna get the fastest Corsair you've ever seen off of a Nexus first. Yeah, I mean, I guess he's got everything dialed in enough that he can, he knows he's just barely gonna be safe enough to deal with this. If he gets the denial on this third hatchery going up as well, he's yeah. gonna be clapping with his feet to the cows come home zone. Look, he's forced it already to the third over here. Yeah. Yeah, he's gonna, wow. he's gonna force it into such an awkward position. If I'm action right now, I'm probably thinking Hydra Bust, honestly. Yeah, I think this was a 230 um, gas, and I've been messing around with this myself quite a bit. If you get the 230 gas, uh, you can actually go for speed and Hydra uh, speed and range. Uh, Link speed, mm. Hydra speed, and range. You can get all of those things um, right, if you time right. it up properly. And that way you can really cut down the uh, possible scouting from the Protoss player. But look, he's going to be here long enough to see the 100 gas come through. So, you know, he's going to see this Hydra down. Dude, Snow yeah. is, he knows everything. He is God. This man is a God right now. <laughs> well, it certainly seems like it for this present moment. I do think this is going to be a fake 973. This just to put on a little bit of pressure from Snow, get him to respect it. Even though um, he has scouted it, it's still a very strong build because the Pros player will have to confirm for sure with the Corsair to, to identify if it is indeed going to be a committed 973 or not. So the Protoss isn't out of the woods yet. The Zerg could just make up, make hydras and kill you still just because you scout it. It doesn't mean you don't automatically defend it. Dude, he is still scouting and... Oh wait, I thought this was going to be a Stargate. Where's the Stargate? Okay, he's not going Stargate. I thought he was going to do super quick Stargate here and just have the Corsair there. Uh, like, way before... Um, you know, to, to, to double check and to confirm if there was Hydra's coming, but he actually skips it. He's just going to go straight into a Zealot timing attack and he's going to confirm yeah. with the Zealot actually and the Probe. Uh, if there's actually Hydras being made. Yeah, I mean, he has... Look at the timings, though. He's doing similar to what Mini did, where he's going really tech... Really, like, tech-heavy, where he's getting, like, really fast, plus one, and Citadel timing with, with just two gateways. And uh, not going to have, like, the highest amount of Zealots, but we'll have the, the plus one and speed done very quickly. Mm, he's going to see more Hydras popping. I think uh, Snow is going to need the... Uh, uh, extra cannons here at the front. He needs to go to three cannons really quick right now. He is going to have really fast speed here um, with his Zealots. He does start a Stargate, but this is way after a uh, Citadel finished and speed uh, started on the, the, the legs here. The Zealot legs came in. Um, pushing out with the one Dragoon. I've seen this play a lot actually emulated on the ladder. The one Dragoon plus three Zealot is kind of a scary little army there, and you're going to be able to confirm how many Hydras are being made because you have to push forward and uh, force your way uh, up towards that natural with the Overlord. Like, you've got to push forward here, so you have to reveal how many Hydras you're making in order to, to, to get rid of this, to actually, you know, force this back. So we're going to have more gateways coming up here in the main. And that Zealot timing attack we were talking about a little bit earlier, he's going to try and hit while action is droning here. He's getting some more hatcheries up. And there's a bit of like a shaky period for Zerg as they're transitioning out of the Hydra into drone production and then back into Hydra again. If any mistakes are made in there, you can hit with a very strong Zealot timing and actually tear them apart. Yeah, I think what was really key there was that he forced the Overlord back so it couldn't come in and confirm the exact defensive position yeah. of Snow. He didn't know if he could commit to an attack or anything, right? Like, it really obfuscates the, the what he should do in that situation. Yeah, and look at this. He cancels the fourth cannon. He sends the Corsair in the path of Hydras to make sure that there's no more Hydras coming and that that was a good idea. He doesn't need to restart that. He's going to get over here and confirm how many drones have been made. He sees the hatchery. Dude... This is a master class from Snow right now we're watching. Yeah, and look at the, the timing of the Zealot. It's a lot, lot slow. It's not a lot quicker, but it is uh, slightly faster than the usual timings. You usually see around seven minutes, kind of plus one Zealot speed. This is more like 6.30, 6.40 kind of timing. So it gives you just a slightly sharper window to potentially do some uh, significant damage to the Zerg. At the very least, it allows you to be very active out on the map with those Zealots early on. Look for potential targets. And 
he will be using this Corsair to see if he can even go for that or not. So he has identified that there's a strong enough position here that he doesn't want to attack into it anytime soon. But still, he's keeping the Zerg pinned back for now. So action's going to go up to at least two control groups of Hydra before he's even started his six hatcheries. So he's going to be a little bit unoptimized. I think we're going to see two groups of Zealots here. We're going to see one run into the third and one try to uh, rush into the main uh, while the Corsairs are making like a bunch of uh, overlords disappear, vaporize in the air while all that chaos is going on. This is going to get really wacky and really weird, but that's exactly what Snow wants to do to action right now. No th uh, six hatchery here just yet. And action's actually pumped out a, a pretty big amount of Hydras. He's got at least two control groups of Hydras ready. So he's actually done the correct response to this, but how much economy has he actually actually sacrificed for getting all these Hydras out? Because Snow's been making non-stop probes behind this, I guarantee it. Yeah, this is the compensation that Snow's getting by doing such an aggressive style like this and getting slightly earlier tech timings. It's railroaded action into favoring a heavier army, and he's not got a sick hatchery. He's not got the kind of drone saturation he wants. He's got absolutely bare minimal drone saturation because he wants to go on for a full-on offensive right now he's probably not even going to make any drones he just wants to get pure units on one drone per mineral block see if he can catch snow with his pants down right now and just flood him with hydras before he can react to it he's got a small contingency of force so that's going to be doing a little run by though into the natural expansion which will complicate things a little bit here yeah this is so good by snow you you have to pay attention to your hydras up here at the front because if you get one storm on this, it is going to ruin this bust. Zealots are in high enough number that just one storm will kill this. So he is going to be, you know, forced to pay attention to the main base uh, and killing off these zealots while trying to dodge these storms at the same time. It's very, very hard to do. And Snow is taking perfect advantage of this situation. He's getting a bunch of drone kills in the main and natural. And he's getting those storms off that he needs to hold back this army. Yeah, action's not getting through gear, man. He is not going to be able to break this. Snow's, I think taken such an advantage oh, wow. now that uh really action is forced <laughs> his, his hand is forced he has to go in here and his hydras are just run out he's done gg gg oh my god snow absolute Crazy. master class dude this guy what a beast what a beast he gets the clap i don't yeah, usually I don't I, I don't uh, <laughs> I don't usually uh, feel very good when I see a, a Protoss player rip apart a Zerg player like that it brings back too many too many bad memories but PTSD. that was so impressive really incredible play there from Snow and dude if we start seeing more Protoss play like that's like a mini-esque thing Remember when Mini was uh, going Gateway first and then he was putting Cybernetis Core before Forge yeah, and everyone was yeah. freaking out? This is like... Uh, imagine Snow taking it one step forward. Nexus first, Gateway, then Cybernetis Core. Absolutely insane. Yeah, he kind of did like the greedy version of uh, Mini's tech build. It, it worked really well. Uh, uh, really sharp. And... I misspoke there. Uh, Nexus first, Gateway, then Forge. Um... With a, I mean, it gives you such a quick cybernet score, but he, no, he didn't skip the forge there. Oh, dude, the greed is crazy from Protoss. Well, wrapping up here is a little bit tough. This was maybe the best week of KCM we've ever seen. Um, such a pleasure here to cast with you, Shun, and, and to cast for all of you guys out there, the audience watching right now. You too, saying uh, I usually find it a pleasure to cast KCM and bring you guys good cast, but this week in particular has been pretty special. A huge tempo swings back and forth between players. A lot of players showing up, and even the players that made like big blunders, they were still showing up to their games and giving us really exciting. Uh, the, the, the only thing that we maybe we could say was a bit, you know, flat was maybe like light getting smacked, but other than that, I think pretty stellar performances all around. Yeah, nobody else really got smacked down. Everybody else kind of brought their their A game there, um, and I, I I'm wondering like we we have seen some good performances from Light, but uh, mm. Light and Queen both kind of falling flat uh, for the most part this week. Though Queen, you know, bringing out a good performance. Uh, I hope that right. Light can do the same in the next week. Yeah, and Queen, he almost took out Bisu as well, let's not forget, right? Like, mm -hmm. sure, he kind of, like, threw that game a little bit, but he was almost beating Bisu in that game. And 
can you imagine what we'd be saying if he beat Bisu as well? Like we'd be like, whoa. Queen is back, yeah. I mean, yeah. We it still remains to be seen. He's got to put up some good performances in more than just one week of KCM. But right. um, beating Bisu would have been a huge feather in the cap there. Like uh, as it stands, still put up some good fights against some of these other players. Uh, took out uh, who, how many pillars to take out? He took out two guys uh, this week. Yeah, yeah. I think so. so, I mean, putting out a good. A version of himself one of the best versions we've seen of queen for a little while uh but hero dude hero crazy action insane snow so so amazing bisu right. fantastic the, i guess terran lineup was really the the underwhelming they got picked off the fastest but just wild from these other these other two sides yeah, I mean, Terran needs to make sure they don't like get into another flat line with these coming seasons, though. Uh, I, I did anticipate them doing. I, I expected them to come second place this week, so hopefully they can fix that out because right now they're on the flat line trajectory. So they need to fix that in the next week. Yeah, two weeks in a row after that opener in week one. Um, still very tight point rankings here, guys. It's mm. anybody's season to get that first place slot and the seed into the finals. Uh, the semifinals last season was pretty much decided by week five or six. It was like, uh, you know, we knew yeah. who was going to be first. But <laughs> this season could be a lot different. It could be a much tighter race. A lot more exciting for all of us viewers back at home. But I don't know if Absolutely. I can handle much more excitement, man. That was that was pretty, <laughs> was pretty yeah. wild. I mean... I mean, we're not even into summer yet, and I feel like Christmas has come early. <laughs> All right, with that, guys, thank you so much for watching. We're going to wrap up here. We'll see you in the next week of KCM.